All right. I believe this means we are live. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, tech fans of all shapes and sorts and sizes and persuasions. Welcome to another new egg stream. I'm Juan Carlos Spagnell, aka Some Gadget Guy. And I always love getting to host these uh, gadget streams on the new egg channel for all you eggheads out there. Uh, we get to talk about some really fun toys. We get to talk about cool components. We get to talk about PC building and gaming. And this one strikes near and dear to me. I'm, I'm definitely a mobile first workflow kind of guy. I like high performance in portable packages. And it, it, it's always my pleasure, a man who really needs no introduction if you've caught our streams in the past, because he's he's helped us through a number of these topics and PC builds and, and gaming uh, accessories videos. Uh, Mr. JJ from Asus, uh, thanks so much for, for jumping in, for joining us on another one of these live streams. Yeah, uh, fantastic to again be here with yourself, JC, and of course with the entire uh, Newegg uh, Studio team. And of course to all of you guys that are tuning into the live stream. I think this is a really, really awesome uh, stream that we're going to be diving into talking about the latest generation of Asus ROG um, Strix gaming laptops, both in our G series and our, our SCAR series, and really just the, the entire overhaul and design that we've gotten put into this generation. It's going to be a really cool uh, deep dive. And I think there's going to be some pretty cool information, finding out some things you not, might, might not be aware of, some things you might be aware of, and how it all comes together in some pretty amazing laptops. Oh, yeah. And, and, and it just seems like a good time for it. I mean, over our last like two years of uh, conversations on on computers and, and DIY and, uh, and building these systems, it, it seems like this is one of those good transition points as we're talking about new technologies making their way into the next generation of laptops and portables. And uh, it really kind of fulfilling that, that um, high level immersive but portable idea for, for, some, uh, for some high quality content. Yeah, no, you're 100% right. I mean, uh, you know, laptops are a really interesting space. It's one that, of course, Asus has really been an industry leader in, especially when we talk about our gaming-centric laptops. Um, you know, we have a really deep portfolio, of course, from everything from our Studio Book series to our ZenBook and VivaBook, and, of course, the ROG uh, line, which really covers actually a huge range of thin and light to, of course, the highest level of performance-based offerings. And I think with this generation, especially the G15, G17 and the SCAR 15 models, and eventually even the SCAR 17, we're really hitting a sweet uh, kind of point in terms of leveraging the latest generation technology that you're talking about, whether we're talking about uh, these really amazing RTX 30 series uh, GPUs from NVIDIA, and of course, all that they bring along with in terms of the technology and the performance, along with, of course, latest generation chips, and of course, all the other things that get baked in there to be able to give us uh, a laptop that I think really gives us kind of for the first time, um, a true gaming experience in terms of almost desktop class level performance, but still offering portability, strong battery life, and a lot of refinements that have really kind of been years in the design and development, right? To really be able to offer um, an experience that whether it's gonna be the physical elements, whether it's gonna be the connectivity, whether it's going to be the aesthetic elements, um, all of those things kind of come together to really be able to offer a great synergy that um, has really, like I said, been years in the making and, and really uh, leverages the design expertise and, and the feedback that we've also taken from our community of our users. So it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah, it, I mean, I, I love talking about that refinement. I mean, we're going to be talking about the aesthetics. We're going to be talking about the performance. Um, I love getting into these conversations from the ASUS perspective because you seem to be one of those um, collaborative companies, right? Like your products exist through bringing uh, SOC manufacturers, GPU manufacturers, wireless and and broadband connectivity and radio management uh, providers, everyone kind of flows through this to arrive at an ASUS labeled uh, laptop. So I'm really excited to, to jump in this with you because those types of combined insights, you know, like a CPU benchmark in a vacuum doesn't really mean a whole lot. But when we really put this stuff into a real world chassis, that's where I get lit up. I, I just a little bit of housekeeping before we jump into this conversation for everybody watching. And I know we're, we're streaming this live on a number of platforms on the Facebooks, on YouTube, on the Twitch. Um, the Newegg Ninjas are going to be hanging out in the comments on all these platforms because I, I, I kind of feel like it wouldn't be a fun live stream if we didn't have a few things to kind of like uh, maybe send out as, as goodwill gestures to the folks that are tuning into our live stream. So be on the lookout. We, we might have some fun stuff to kind of tag a few of the participants in the chat with. And, uh, you know, again, just something put a little smile on your face as you're wrapping up your week. And, and uh, maybe it's, you know, somewhat gaming adjacent or gaming related. I, it could happen. 
I'm just saying, I'm just putting it out there. You never know, right? <laughs> you never know. Exactly. I mean, you, you, it, it's lightning in a bottle. You can't really, can't really capture it like that. So um, I, I, I want to jump right in um, because I, I love kind of getting into these conversations. And, and like I was sort of alluding to before, I feel like there's a conversation here as we're watching graphics card cycles, as we're watching the market kind of shift up. Um, the expectations of consumers as they're trying to, to invest in new gear. It's good timing as we're getting to the end of the summer. And, and I was hoping you could maybe dig into a little bit that relationship or those insights that you've that Asus has has benefited from um, in partnering with manufacturers like NVIDIA. Um, yeah. It's such a huge part of this equation. Uh, that, that thing that separates a mobile workstation, mobile gaming style product from from like a a thin and light, you know, word processing kind of machine. Yeah, hundred um, percent. So I think you know the first part is helping to reinforce you know the scope of what we're really going to kind of be talking about here in this stream. So for us, um, you know, these are our latest generation twenty twenty one models for the ROG Strix gaming laptop lineup. So we've got the the ROG Strix G fifteen and G seventeen, and then we also have the ROG Strix Scar. Uh, 15, as well as upcoming later on in the year, you'll actually have the 17 variant. And these uh, really kind of, I think, are new for 2021 in two kind of key ways. One, you're going to, of course, have the latest generation in terms of NVIDIA's RTX 30 series graphics cards that are going to be built in. And these really help to define the performance and the expectation of what you talk about with a gaming centric product, right? Um, leveraging, of course, the high uh, image quality that you have available, whether it's gonna be with RTX, whether it's gonna be leveraging DLSS, uh, the wide range of specialized options that you have in terms of filter processing within GeForce Experience, and of course, mm -hmm. all the architectural improvements that they're bringing along with you know, Max-Q and everything that that does for a laptop, whether it's gonna be uh, quieter operation, more efficient operation, as well as uh, dynamic um, boost technology, which helps to improve performance. These things aligned with the overall design of these laptops, um, like you said, really help to hit the balance of offering, I think, gamers a product that can be equally used in kind of a desktop scenario, as well as, you know, an on-the-go scenario, because you do have, um, you know, good actual battery life, uh, comparatively, mm -hmm. where prior generations, you know, you would probably talk about laptops in this type of performance class, really being that if you were going to use it for for general use, productivity, web, you know, video, things along those lines, you may be talking about maybe like an hour and a half, two hours or something like that. But, you know, <laughs> with these models, you could really just sit down, you could be using it for web surfing, watching some video, a little bit of mixed workloads, and you could literally be saying, you know, six, seven, eight uh, plus hours of battery life, which is impressive for these type of products um, when you also contend that they can really offer a top level of gaming performance, especially when aligned with the high performance panels that these 2021 models are bringing about, whether you're talking mm -hmm. about ultra high refreshes all the way up to, let's say, 300 hertz, or of course, with the new 1440p displays, which are 165 hertz, right? Um, and I think, you know, talking about kind of that relationship and working with NVIDIA, that's really a cornerstone of, I think, of the design and development of our, a lot of our laptops in this regard, right? Um, you know, we've really been a longtime partner with them, producing everything from, of course, on our component side, you know, graphics card, decent compatible monitors, to, of course, here on the laptop side with, uh, you know, solutions where we have professional series products and studio book that have Quadro, and, of course, these gaming series projects, which are utilizing RTX series uh, GPUs. And um, really, I think the core goal there is that NVIDIA does a huge amount of work in terms of kind of designing uh, the technology and the architecture regarding these GPUs. And our job is to really kind of look at how can we make sure that the experience that then we're providing to these users is really one that um, elevates their overall kind of experience when it comes to gaming and general use, right? And that's going to be in the fit, the finish, the feel, the performance, the thermals, the noise, all these little touchstones that we're going to kind of dive into. And uh, we're excited to be able to continue this uh, relationship with NVIDIA, especially for these 2021 editions. Not, not to dig too much into like proprietary information, but just a little bit of BTS. I, I think it's a common goal, uh, it, you know, since since I've started getting, uh, since I've been into mobile gaming and, and uh, gaming laptops, and I was coming at this a little bit more from a content creation standpoint. Um, it, it definitely is, it has been a consistent talking point. We want to improve portability. We want to improve battery life. We don't want to sacrifice performance. We want to close that delta between laptops and desktops. So obviously, I'm sure that that's feedback ASUS is regularly getting. I'm sure that's feedback NVIDIA is regularly getting. Um, what, what does that chain of communication look like as your customers are coming back to you to say, 
as your customers are coming back to ASUS, not you specifically, um, to say like, hey, these are, this was my were my experiences with their products. I'm sure you're passing some of that information up to NVIDIA, but I also have to believe that NVIDIA is also looking at their own kind of market demos to say like, this is the feedback we're getting on our products too. How, how, how do you eventually meet in the middle to kind of collaborate on what next gen should resemble when you're getting ready to manufacture? You know, I think it really ultimately just comes down to um, the segmentation and kind of the target focus, right? Um, I think within that, you you then look to design and develop the product in alignment with where that focus is, right? So when we talk about something like these models with the, you know, the G15, the SCAR15, um, we're really looking at kind of offering, I think, desktop replacement class, right? Um, performance, um, but at the same time offering, you know, reasonable level of portability, rich connectivity, right? So that, you know, there's definitely a clear distinction between something that you're going to have and let's say a super thin and light that we might have, let's say within like mm -hmm. our, our Zenbook line or some of the more premium specialized offerings that we have under kind of the Zephyrus ROG line uh, series of products um, and kind of hit that kind of sweet spot balance. And when you kind of uh, bring together that, I think, with the work that NVIDIA is doing in terms of the GPU performance that's afforded, uh, we then have to factor in, you know, how does that look like when we implement things like the thermal design, the power envelopes, uh, the screen relationship, the target for battery life, right? Because it's not just about necessarily maybe having um, the absolute best performance, but does that come at the expense of, let's say, adding, you know, uh, a pound and a half more weight, right? Or sacrificing, um, you know, the the battery life to be able to take something that might only have four hours versus something that could have, you know, let's say eight hours, right? right? So those are all kind of factors that we kind of evaluate. And that helps to also create a delineation between the product series lineup that we have. So whether you're kind of looking for the, the top full kind of dedicated desktop series product, then, you know, we can then coordinate and work with NVIDIA to say, okay, let's get the highest absolute, you know, um, GPU part that we can put in here that will provide the absolute most power possible, even if it meant, you know, having to use more than like the 240 watt adapter or something like right. that, right? But I think for this product, we really truly wanted to offer a, a mobile centric product, but they could also equally be at home as like a desktop replacement product. Yeah, because I definitely have a few friends in my circles that like, if you can give them just enough battery life to get from like one out wall outlet to the next, <laughs> they, they want so much power, no matter what, they just need to be able to move it um, from location to location. So I mean, we're, 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 we're kind of starting this conversation off talking about collaborations and these, these companies that are manufacturing components and helping you finish off these products. But I mean, we're obviously talking about NVIDIA because this new generation of laptops are sporting RTX 30 series GPUs. Um, mm -hmm. and, and so is, is that how we kind of want to start this off? Kind of the higher level, the, the common sort of bullet points between these various laptop lines and, and, and what those um, GPUs I, I, you are know, I think, doing? You know, but, but, you know, we definitely can focus in on providing some of the design benefits and kind of the architectural and feature benefits that the 30 mm -hmm. series GPUs before we get into some of the actual design narratives, especially between kind of last year's um, ROG 2021 models and of course uh, this year's 2021 models. Um, mm -hmm. As kind of a general high level recap, if you guys are kind of wondering about what really I think distinguishes these units in terms of being attractive is of course gonna be from that key specification CPU, they are utilizing the latest generation AMD Ryzen 5000 series CPU. So that offers a, a very high level of performance there. And of course, great level of efficiency. You pair that together of course with these outstanding high performance NVIDIA RTX 30 series graphics cards. And that really brings us, I think the core of what really drives the experience here. So, um, you know, of course, configuration wise, when you're looking at Newegg, you're gonna see there's gonna be varying model configurations, you know, um, let's say from, let's say the most entry level series model, which might be something like an RTX 3050 class, of course, all the way up to something like here, the highest model, which would be, um, you know, 5900HX, right, along with an RTX 3080, which would really offer a super high level of performance, especially when you pair that with then another update for this uh, 2021 edition, which will be a 1440 screen. Now, mm -hmm. we'll definitely dive into kind of the, 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 all the subtle details in terms of, you know, Wi-Fi, audio, thermal improvements, um, you know, the physical body and many other things that we've done in terms of that. But I think that's a good baseline that for those of you just kind of wondering about those key kind of hero specs, um, that's really what we're talking about with this latest generation series product. Um, pivoting over to, I think, what the 30 series brings to us. Um, you know, if you actually bring up, I think NVIDIA has got a great site that you can actually take a look at, guys, and it, kind of detail. But of course, really with 30 series, I think one of the key benefits, if you take a look at comparison to prior generations, especially if you're talking about from a laptop from two to four years ago, you know, you're getting a huge uplift in performance, right? You're going to be getting 
RTX, you're going to be getting DLSS te te technology. You're going to, of course, get the latest generation of GeForce experience, which brings a lot of functionality into it, whether it's going to be on the fly hardware level recoding, excuse me, encoding, um, you know, the ability to, of course, stream all through one single UI interface, the NVIDIA, of course, uh, broadcast software, which is going to be great to be able to pivot not only from a kind of a a gaming from home, right, or gaming on the go kind of scenario, but also giving the flexibility that maybe if you're uh, working from home, learning from home, uh, maybe going back, actually back to school, those are going to be great scenarios where you can leverage uh, the performance, uh, not only within gaming, but within those other applications uh, to be able to go ahead and give you an overall better experience. And so I think some of the really cool things that we have here. And um, you know, when we get a little bit into the thermal design and kind of the performance design uh, aspects of these laptops, one of the really cool things is going to be the Max-Q technologies that NVIDIA has put as part of these GPUs. And some of the key ones that you're going to really have is going to be dy dynamic boost technology, which actually allows for a balancing of power distribution between the CPU and the GPU. So depending on kind of the load, there can actually be a, a pivot to essentially provide more power to the GPU so that you can get an increase in performance or vice versa. Uh, when there's actually a scenario where maybe the CPU needs that, then you can actually go the other way. Um, the uh, whisper mode technology is gonna be really outstanding. This unit literally under our silent profile is truly silent. Uh, the fans won't even spin up. It allows for a super <laughs> quiet level operation. So if I'm just watching a stream, you know, checking out email, looking at photographs, doing basic things, even if I may be doing light, you know, indie, non, you know, heavy gaming, you could be working under those scenarios and profiles and have a super quiet system. Um, so I think those are two really key impressive technologies. And of course, you've got other stuff that is baked out that some of you may or may not be aware of, like addressable bar. Um, this resizable bar support just helps to uplift mm -hmm. performance. Uh, NVIDIA has baked this in, default into the GPUs, into the drivers, into the vBIOS. The great thing is here, as long as you install the driver, the game will automatically essentially be detected by the corresponding NVIDIA driver. And if it can support a benefit from uh, the resizable bar, it'll turn it on and you'll get a performance uplift. Um, that aligns with you know the latest versions of Windows and, of course, also ready for the next generation of Windows with Windows 11. So a lot of really good tech uh, that's been built in here that um, is going to give you a better experience on that kind of 30 series GPU. Yeah, we, we had a, a good back and forth kind of talking about that. That that was a phrase that I was a little less familiar with when we started talking resizable bar. Um, but it, it, again, it, it definitely seems to be a cycle of a number of these kinds of iterations and improvements coming together to kind of nudge along um, some more substantial real world application improvements once we get there. Um, I, I kind of wanted to, to just circle back real quick because you would kind of said, uh, between the previous versions and 2021 versions of these yep. today, these are the current, you know, like the current year, current day, 2021 um, models. And and um, I, I suppose I should, I should say because I you know, when I start talking about some of these some of these gadgets here, do we want to start with the scar and and go from there to yeah to yeah I think that's actually that? a great a great kind of place to start off with and allows us to and I can really clearly compare the 2020 to the 2021. And I think the first right. thing here is to kind of just talk a little bit about the overall design intent, right? So, you know, um, I've actually, this is it right here. This is the, the 2021 model. So I'm gonna go ahead and just pull it off right here. Uh, get, you, I get you guys a little bit closer look, but I know you guys got some cool little uh, shots here, you know, too, that we can kind of fill up with it. Yeah, but sure. um, the, the big thing here, I think for this generation is that the ID design that we went ahead and kind of pursued was really driven actually from kind of an esports and kind of athletic wear. It's kind of thematically present in a lot of our ROG Strix products. Um, but this really is about also form kind of meeting function. So of course, you've got this really kind of clean, nice stylized accent uh, where you've got, of course, all the RGB lighting. There's RGB lighting here in terms of the light bar, RGB lighting on the keyboard. RGB lighting that's also right here underneath the bezel, uh, which is new for the actual 2021 model. And then of course the uh, ROGI, which also has RGB lighting as well. Um, and so we'll be taking a closer look here to be able to kind of show you the differences between, this is actually the 2020 model that we have right here. But the design intent was really um, holistically to look at every single element. There's really not one area that we didn't look at and improve upon. So whether it's actually the aesthetics, the fit, the feel, that was improved upon. The thermal design, that was improved upon. The audio design, that was improved upon. Um, all these different aspects, we individually kind of looked at all of them to say, how could we improve the experience for users when they wanted to go with it? And the SCAR is kind of the benchmark of that. 
between the G15 and between the SCAR15, there will be quite a number of actually subtle differentials. And even as kind of you're looking at some of the reviews, some reviews are kind of calling this and, and clarifying it, but some aren't necessarily fully detailing it. So hopefully by the end of the stream, you'll have a really good idea at understanding exactly where the difference might be between, let's say, the G15 and the SCAR15. It's important to also keep in mind that from kind of a general specification level, the highest level specifications are going to be exclusive to the SCAR 15. So that would mean that if you're looking to be able to go ahead and get something like an RTX 3080 and the 5900 HX, you know, 32 gigabytes of memory, that's going to be on here. But a lot of the consistent design attributes in terms of the fit, the finish, um, and uh, many of the other kind of features on the products, of course, will be contiguous between the two models. So, you know, you don't have to necessarily worry about that. But, um, you know, let's I think with, with that kind of general premise, we, we can kind of go into the to the next point um, and clarify also that we will have two different series. So there will be the 15 and then the 17. Now, most of the kind of focus that we're going to have here is going to be on the 15-inch model. Uh, we will have a, a Strix uh, G17, and there will be later a SCAR 17. But for most intents and purposes, everything that we're kind of going to be defining between the 15 inches uh, models and then the 17 inch models will be the same except for that you get that bigger of course screen um, space that with a 17 inch model and of course a little bit of a revision to the kind of keyboard deck area and we'll of mm -hmm. course take a closer look at that um, once we actually get there but um, let me first go ahead and actually get a little bit closer here and uh, show you actually one of the kind of cool design elements um, that you'll be able to actually see on the 2021 model uh, that differs a bit so let me go ahead and get my secondary cam set up here. Yeah, for sure. All right. And so especially when we're talking about the, the same laptop, but in different sizes, um, I, I have to believe that some of those engineering challenges were, um, you know, not insignificant trying to keep the same sort of collection of guts uh, similar between a 15 inch chassis and a 17 inch chassis. Uh, for sure. Um, there are definitely challenges in that regard, especially because within this generation, um, for kind of pretty much every, every way that you can look at it, um, we made improvements and even actually making the uh, new generation, the 2021 model, actually uh, more compact. So it's actually going to be an overall smaller dimension. So if actually um, I can show you guys a little bit of a comparison here. So give me a second and you guys can kind of get a sense of where the variation occurs. Um, one moment here. Let me load this up for you guys. And we'll be able to kind of see this a little bit more clearly. Um, uh, I think, yeah, right here, we've got a little video file yeah. for you guys. So you guys can actually see right there. So you can see this is actually laid over directly the 2021 model compared to the 2020 model. So even though they're going to, they're both quote unquote 15, right? You actually can see that dimensionally uh, one is on top of it, it's actually gonna be a more compact design. And of course that follows through in terms of the internal design narrative as well. So um, when we talk about the actual, um, excuse me, uh, the design narrative, even when we take a look at things like internally, like the, mm -hmm. the bezel design, that has also been refined. It's become actually thinner as well. And we'll take a closer look sh shot there, but um, go ahead and just kind of move over here. And so yeah. you'll see um, there's kind of these really subtle kind of details that you kind of might not necessarily always notice, but you can actually see right here in terms of what's called the A cover, the top cover, there's this really kind of subtle textured finish. And the top cover is entirely aluminum. So this is a metal um, top cover. And we actually use a very high performance uh, 500 watt laser to actually do the etching on here. So this is this very high quality um, actually etching process. Compared to many other laptops, sometimes they actually use a much lower quality laser. It's actually not indented as much. It doesn't have as much durability and doesn't have as much uh, difference in terms of the overall textual design. This kind of angular design you'll find throughout a lot of the products. Um, mm -hmm. It's a pretty cool implementation. Um, of course, there's an accent design that we have here. Uh, if you go towards the corner right here, this is going to be kind of one of the cool things that you'll see right here, where it's just a little bit of a way to kind of customize the experience. So you can um, go ahead and pull this off. Let me see if I can get the other. Oh, we're doing it live. Here we go. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so you can see right here, you've got your kind of swappable covers. <laughs> That's right, fun. Sorry. Like that. There we go. Um, so you can see right there, if you want to kind of change up the design aesthetic, these will be something that you can also kind of further kind of change up the design aesthetic there. And, and we did have a trouble. question what the what that light is, because we can see there's like a 
a little light right there in the corner of the screen. Oh, yeah, right here? Yeah, that little guy. Yeah, so these are actually the status LEDs. They actually are present on the prior generation, but these are functional. So um, I'll show these actually in a little bit of the wide shot. Let me go here quickly. But here in our wide shot, if you see right here, if you kind of had the, just the laptop laid down flat and you were taking a look at it right there, you'll actually see that there's actually status LEDs that are there. And the cool thing about those status LEDs is that there's a cutout between when you open up the actual panel, which you can actually see I can lift open with just one finger and it stays very stable, very firm. Um, that section right there maintains visibility. And the nice thing about that is that those different status LEDs are essentially visible even when you're kind of just looking over and you just want to see is the laptop charging or different things along those lines. That's what those actually LEDs are. And there's also a space there because, of course, as you see, when I lift up the laptop, mm -hmm. right, and once it comes on, um, directly underneath this portion right here, there's actually bezel lighting. And um, we can actually take a look at that. I've got a little bit of a file here, and I'll, I'll show that there in a moment. Um, well, I was, I was also going to... I was also going to ask because I mean I've seen this design accent on on a couple of Asus laptops in the past. Does that cl clearance uh, you know that is a hot spot on my gaming laptop which comes from a competitor's um manufacturing company. Uh the way it vents and the way it cools that whole strip like directly under the display where now you've got that little fraction of a gap, that little bit of clearance yeah. between the body of the laptop and the laptop. Um I, to, to, to me, that would immediately read as airflow. To me, that would look like also part of how you would keep it cool and then also not cook the internals like the exciter um, yeah, so that, you, that you, activate the screen. Yeah, definitely to your point. So if we actually take, again, that kind of that, that look there, um, you'll actually see here, if we take a little bit of a closer look, you'll see that there's perforation that's built into mm -hmm. this that's actually also works as part of the airflow. But when we get to the thermal design characteristic, um, you know, we'll actually talk about the actual four point design that we have here. So there's actually going to be venting here that's on the side, on the side, and then on the back, on the back. So there's actually four separate points. And then you have your intake airflow that's also working there in conjunction. And overall, thermally, really the goal here was to be able to ensure a very good thermal performance um, while gaming, while also maintaining a, a very good level of, of um Acoustic signature, as I noted, right, depending on the profiles mm -hmm. that you have within this unit, even if you go from, let's say, performance into our turbo profile, our goal was to be under 45 dB. And oh, nice. um, when you're when you're talking about actually like a realistic scenario, along with a specially tuned fan blade design that we have, our Artflow fans, which have some very interesting, actually, um, kind of uh, production processes, the tone of the fan along with the actual total output, the noise, is actually quite reasonable so that you can legitimately, when you account for the really good quality audio design that we have here, where we actually have four different speakers here, um, two tweeters, and then two standard mid-range woofers that are in there, give you really good, solid, clear, non-distorted audio, because there's also a, a specialized, what we call smart amp design in there that helps to mm -hmm. manage the amplification uh, for those speakers that you could actually get comfortably enjoy gaming without having to put on a pair of headphones. But of course, if you did put on headphones, then you don't have to worry about that. But that's kind of part of that overall design synergy. I, I had to send back a creator laptop because the medium fan hum, really quiet, but came in at an obnoxiously high frequency. And, yeah. and it, like it, it went, I went instant headache. Um, so again, I'm, I'm not going to trash talk a competitor of yours <laughs> in our live stream here, but just saying, um, as someone who's sensitive to sound, and I work in a lot of recording and, and audio mixing, um, it's it's appreciated. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I, I think for us, um, the goal was really to, you know, again, this is not our first foray, right? We've been doing <laughs> high performance gaming laptops for a long time. And because of our kind of the consistency of engaging with the community, with media, and also coordination with partners like NVIDIA, and helping to kind of really understand best practices of implementation for the GPU, we can really help to readily kind of put in profiles to align with users' targets and mm -hmm. also align those with actual the real world experiences that users are having. So if you're jumping in and, and playing, you know, uh, Doom Eternal and you're loading up, you know, DLSS and you're putting on RTX, right, or you're jumping into uh, Cyberpunk, you know, really, what does those scenario environments look like? What's the actual temperatures look like? What's the clock speeds look like? And also, are those going to ultimately align with something that you find comfortable and usable, right, day in and day out, right? That is really kind of the key goal. Um, but 
um, you know, continuing kind of this little external design trend, another update that we'll have here, and I'll show you a little bit of a close-up shot to compare here. Um, but if we take a look at the bottom right here, you might not even think that there's been a change here, but in the 2021 model as well, um, we actually took, again, kind of uh, inspiration from athletic wear, where one of the things that we saw that there was an opportunity to improve upon was stability. So we take a look here at the base, and there's actually these uh, larger um, rubber soles that are essentially on here, very similar to kind of like the rubber outsoles that you would have <laughs> right. on the tread for a shoe. And this really allows you to have excellent stiff kind of rigidity so that when you place this down, it doesn't move. It stays really, really uh, stuck to essentially that location, gives you a nice stable base so that again, you can kind of open things up really smoothly, really evenly. And that's a big improvement compared to the prior generation. Um, let me go ahead and actually show you a little bit of this file here so you can kind of see um, side by side generation. Yeah. Uh, here we go, base comparison. Um, yeah, so I think right here we've got the file guys. And so here you can see. Oh, yeah, I can. Compared yeah, to the, uh, the uh, on my screen, right, that should be on my left hand side, you'll see the 2021 model. And then on the other side, you'll see the 2020 variant. So the prior one had kind of your standard feet. They weren't bad, they worked well, um, but we were able to significantly kind of able to improve the stability um, by going essentially with this design. And again, this kind of speaks to that we really kind of tried to look at what we call design thinking. Every single element yeah. of the laptop was improved upon. Um, so before we get to the inside, because there's also some big updates on the inside, I do want to specifically touch on two parts of the externals that also have kind of been upgraded. Um, and again, for reference, if everybody's kind of watching, this is the SCAR 15 that we're talking about. So every single design attribute that I'm talking about is going to be present on any variant for the SCAR 15 that you look at. And uh, for the majority of the kind of specific design attributes, they will also be present on the G15, um, where most of the difference will generally be within the keyboard. Um, uh, the audio design and the panel um, outside of your general kind of performance specifications where like the SCAR, of course, would be like maybe a 3070 or 3080. Um, and then, you know, your G15 might be like a 3060 or something along those lines, right? right? Um, but the next part is going to be this top cover. And so you might think, okay, you already talked about that's aluminum and, you know, you have the uh, laser etching, you have what's called our angular design, right, where you can see kind of there's a two textured finish, but we even have a specialized coating that's on here. And the coating actually allows for um, uh, more of an o kind of semi oleophobic property. And what that essentially means is that everybody kind of knows your hands can get sweaty and you can kind of get sticky, and you can kind of get <laughs> fingerprints, but the fingerprint performance between even the 2020 model and the 2021 model is actually better. The 2021 model will actually have less actually what's called surface tension between anything that gets kind of placed on it. So it allows for there to be less buildup of kind of like sweat or kind of items on there. And I'll show you actually in a cool little video, um, kind of just real world test in this scenario. But this actually also extends to something that literally took us over uh, two years in terms of design work. <laughs> so See, this, that's, that's, that's kind of great though, because I mean, you're, you're being very polite in, in saying like, oh, we, we gamers, we can get kind of gross. <laughs> well, I, th I think it happens to, every, it happens to everybody, right? Um, and For this sure. portion right here, the entirety of the keyboard, we use a soft touch material and we use actually a special layering process. And on top of that, there's actually something that we call a nano coating. And so this nano coating actually has a very, very high level of what's called H hardness. Um, that hardness helps to allow for an improvement in terms of essentially resistance to, like I said, kind of smudging and fingerprints, as well as also improving the ability to kind of wipe it. So right. let's actually kind of um, take a little bit of look at this here. I think I got. Uh, I mean, that kind of design stuff we, we, we sort of take for granted, but like the way these gadgets age, they get real gross looking real fast if uh, you're not kind of taking care of them well. Oh, yeah, 100%. Uh, so I think here we've got uh, the file loading. Oh, up. yeah, let me um, pull this so up. I got it. I got it. Yep. So here's uh, the top cover. And you can already see against the dimensional difference between the two, right? Uh, of course, the, the more compact design on the left hand side. And you can see right there from my hand, right, just how much more noticeable <laughs> the actual. It, again, you know, I think uh, if it lets me go back here, yeah, there we go. Yeah, yeah we, we can do it again, sure. <laughs> so go back and again, take a look at the, the left-hand side, the new 2021 model, and then compare it to the 2020 model. Yeah. And keep in mind that I touched the newer one, right, which should have had even a wetter kind More. of first, <laughs> right? Um, but you can see that, that kind of difference between the two. 
Um, and when you, of course, wipe away, uh, if we go now to that kind of little shot there, so give me one second here, um, you'll actually see that there's also a little bit of a difference in that regard as well. So. Oh, sorry. There you go. There we go. Okay. Um, so you can also see here, even kind of when you're when you're wiping away that kind mm -hmm. of residual, a little bit of kind of uh, if you're using like a you know just maybe like a slightly damp cloth or something like that, you'll see that it dissipates more quickly on the newer model than on the uh, older twenty one. And both of them were still, like I said, uh, very durable finishes, great quality mm -hmm. design. Right. That's Asus is really known as being kind of a premium vendor and kind of focusing in terms of our material choices. Um, but these are kind of subtle things that you're not going to necessarily see sometimes even in reviews. Um, but right. when you talk about you know, purchasing this type of product, the experience improvement and the design thinking that we're putting forth, these are areas that I think show a noticeable difference. Um, and well, when it's we the take hardest again, thing to encapsulate in a review is, is kind of that lived in experience. You know, like I, I spent a lot of time reviewing phones and we all make jokes about phones being fingerprint magnets. And, and I, you know, I was recently working with the new egg team where they wanted to do part of my setup. And they're like, mm -hmm. I think I need to buy a new mouse. If, if you're going to do any close up on my desk, this mouse has been used. <laughs> it doesn't matter how I wipe it off anymore. Like the finish on it, it's going to look gross. I mean, it was such a such a tiny little detail. But but again, we're trying to do a high quality video showing off like of course, a desktop yeah, setup yeah. and that's not going to play. So real life doesn't work. <laughs> for that. But but again, it's a type of material science that we, we can't really um, we, we can't really properly showcase in, in like a, Hey, I've had this laptop for a couple of weeks. I've run it through some benchmarks. Um, I've had it plugged into this testing rig and these monitors and, and yeah, it did really well. Someone who's, who's owning that thing, you know, they get into yep. year two or year three with that product is having a completely different lifestyle, uh, interaction with that gadget than what we reviewers can ever knowledgeably talk about. Yeah, and, and it's challenging, of course, because you're also trying to cover, you know, um, the, the key kind of items that people are talking about, whether it's going to be general performance or kind of the general specs, and then these kind of other more experiential design attributes. But for these things, you know, definitely within a stream environment like this, too, we want to spend the time to highlight these things because they are um, really big parts of our design and development and production process. Even this nano coating that you can, again, see here on the inside, um, um, and you can see kind of the white, um, it's noticeable in terms of the difference and like i said that durability and that act overall performance is superior um and that's a kind of key part because it also adds to the cost and the complexity yeah. to a product right so when we talk about wanting to really try to help you understand when you buy something like a scar 15 what are the value adds that are you're getting these are kind of these value adds that you're getting it's not just getting that awesome you know rtx 3080 32 gigabytes of ram a one terabyte pci mbme ssd you know and a 5900 hxs and great cooling it's also yeah. these like other subtle things right so um, that's just kind of something to kind of keep in mind there now when we kind of finish off the little bit of the internal tour another point that is also going to have um, a point of differential is going to be this touchpad so the touchpad is significantly larger than in the previous generation. So we, again, also did a uh, different coating here and a glass layer. So super smooth, of course, full gesture support if you want to go that route. But this is much larger than the prior generation. And again, I'll show you kind of a uh, A and B comparison to be able to see the difference there. And that really complements the entirety of the overall design that we have within the keyboard area. And I do see some questions from some people regarding the yeah, audio sure. design. It is important to note that when we get to talking to the audio, there are some differences between some of the higher end configurations. Um, the highest end configurations, especially when you're checking out the new web page, you may notice that if you go into the audio section, you'll see that it says uh, two sets of speakers. So essentially a total of four speakers. Um, again, those two tweeters, and then those two kind of mid range and woofers along with smart amplification. Um, take for instance, let's say, on the more entry G15 model that is currently listed, it's a great unit and has a solid audio design, but it won't offer the same level of um, maximum volume level or the kind of clarity and separation that you're going to have, let's say, on the SCAR model, which is guaranteeing you that highest level of our audio design. So do keep this in mind in terms of that if you're running somebody that's really passionate about the audio, this isn't maybe an area where, again, maybe stepping up to the SCAR variant 
may be something that you'll appreciate. But we'll definitely talk about audio a little bit more. Yeah, I, but, and again, it's it's been through our motherboard conversations where I've always appreciated the fact that you guys have had those higher level conversations about DACs and amps. So uh, that always makes me really happy to dive into. Uh, what are we taking a look at here? Is this the so touchpad? This, this is uh, the side by side here in terms of the, um, the excuse me, <clears throat> The touchpad. So you can see right there, of course, on the right hand side, we've got the 2021. And you can just see how much significantly bigger it is than the prior 2020 version. And the 2020 version, I felt already was quite nice. It was good mm -hmm. size, already very smooth, useful precision drivers. Um, was no issues really in that regard. But we definitely saw feedback where people were looking for something that was even larger, right? So that's larger. Um, another, of course, design difference that it, it's subtle, maybe you may may not notice it always is going to be the inclusion of, uh, you know, kind of an Asus hallmark, I think at this point, mm -hmm. but our integration for numpad. When you're talking about a 15 inch design, you don't normally have access to a dedicated numpad, but we have built one into the touchpad. So you can also see now when we have both of those on screen, how much larger it is on the 2021 variant than it is on the 2020 model. Um, and we also went to a more color neutral uh, lighting design, right? So you've got um, of course, a clean, just white accent backlight there, as opposed to in the prior generation, it was red, which, you know, kind of maybe for some people is like, hey, I've got this red, and then I still have kind of this RGB element and maybe kind of clashes a little bit. So mm -hmm. this was also just a subtler kind of design difference outside of making it larger. Now, um, was there any feedback on, on like the color? So the reason why I ask, uh, I know we're talking about gaming laptops, but it was actually that trackpad that pushed my aunt over into getting a Zen book, mm -hmm. that, that trackpad design. Um, she's a school teacher and she saw that and was immediately like, yeah, I need a number pad. <laughs> like she got real intense about it. Um, it it's it, a very it, divisive kind of thing, right? Some people that really appreciate right. wanting to have the kind of the consistency of being able to target a touchpad. <laughs> it's For nice sure. that you can just literally click a button, have a full standard number key and have that be available to you. Cause traditionally it's not something that you have available to you. Right. Or, or it creates that, that kind of offset keyboard design that again, yep. some people can love because Hey, your hand naturally kind of falls to the side of the keyboard where maybe the trackpad has to live after that point. Yeah, but... and we'll talk about, I think, the layout of the keyboard because as we're kind of rounding things out, we yep. did do a lot of design thinking here because the keyboard layout is really a critical part of the experience. And we have what we now really call is the ROG kind of laptop keyboard layout design where we've kind of really spaced everything out from the arrow keys to even the hot function keys. But um, before I kind of get back to that quickly, I just didn't again want to show because I think I did forget to show it. I showed the cover plates, but it's very simple if you guys did want to swap these, right? Um, you can just essentially pull them off, right? They're magnetic. Mm -hmm. So you just pull out, lift up, and then let's say maybe I want to have a little bit more of that translucent accent design. Maybe I want to go something a little bit kind of bolder. Then I can go ahead and just click that on there, and it's good to go. So again, uh, keep in mind that when you're looking at maybe kind of the more entry-level G15, it may not come with this. It might come with a specific color that's um, mm -hmm. in place already. So that is just kind of a design differential. And the same thing here, too, is also... On the SCAR, we've showed that this, of course, lights up. But on the standard G15, the G15 has a white backlight, which is actually fed from the LCD panel. So that eye is going to have like a nice little illumination to it, um, but mm -hmm. it's not controllable. Where here, of course, you could have it be off or you could have it be any color you want because it's nice. controllable through the uh, Armory Crate and the or RGB experience that we have on the unit. But um, Next up, let's actually take a look here at the keyboard because the keyboard has got this other kind of big update. And this also speaks to what you were talking about in terms yeah. of the layout and the configuration. So one of the uh, things that you'll be able to actually see a little bit closely here, and I can do a close-up shot here too, but I think I've got a video reference, um, is let's take a look at the 2020 model. So this is actually the 2020 model's uh, arrow keys. And you'll see... Dedicated arrow keys, which are great to have again on a 15 inch laptop, right? Because they're in a position where, hey, I can go ahead and move my hand over and hit those cons mm -hmm. consistently. But we said, hey, can we make it even better? Sure, we can make it better. <laughs> so what did we do? Well, we made it bigger, right? That was kind of the theme with a lot of things. Even though we made the laptop smaller, we made so many car key parts of the overall design bigger. So when now you go over to the 2021, you can see uh, that they significantly increased in size. Um, and also the keyboard in itself has also a very big upgrade um, that we went over on this model, which uses a very good quality uh, keyboard, but it's a 
traditional kind of membrane-based keyboard design, right? Some people call it chiclet keyboard, um, a membrane-based keyboard, um, standard switch-based design. But on this generation for this, uh, the Strix SCAR, um, we went ahead and we have an optical mechanical keyboard with full per-key RGB lighting. So previous gen, you could also have per-key RGB lighting, but this keyboard is now an optical-based design. And uh, if I just do a little bit of a typing test, you guys can actually hear, but it's quite nice. Very nice. So you have that nice kind of satisfying affirmed kind of uh, click experience, right? The tactility there, um, really, really nice. It continues to use something that we call our overstroke technology as well, which is actually, we have a slightly um, uh, higher level in terms of the actual actuation. So instead of it being actually where it's about halfway in the depression, it's a little bit actually quicker. So you get actually more consistent and actual feedback. And of course, with it being optical, there's no kind of debounce delay considerations and right. so many other kind of things that you have there. And the reliability is outstanding, right? I mean, on the traditional kind of uh, keyboard, it's already very good, 20 million, right? But here we go up to 100 million. So, you know, 5x delta in terms of the overall performance uh, lifespan that you have when you go over to a mechanical based design. Uh, so it's, it's quite noticeable in that regard. And you also have a um, brighter output. So if you kind of care about the RGB lighting, um, I think I might have, uh, yeah, here we go. A little bit kind of just a general kind of test and side by side. Oh, the lighting okay. also in these optical designs you're going to find care. will be brighter. So if you kind of again look uh, between the two here, you can see the kind of standard keyboard that you could still get on some of the 2021 models that don't, of course, come included, like let's say the standard G15 as opposed to the SCAR. But the SCAR on the other side has the optical mechanical keyboard. Yeah, looking real good. And personally for me, I find that, like I said, they're not super loud, but they are kind mm -hmm. of noticeable, right? So you can you can kind of experience it. Travel is going to be very similar. Um, 1.9 millimeters travel versus I think the standard is two millimeters, but they both also still feature that overstroke technology. And I think I can actually show you guys a slide here. So let me show you um, just a little bit of a closer look up here in terms of this. Um, now, it, but it has been one of oh, kind of sure. the, the the most exciting aspects of laptop design in general is having options that that kind of mirror some of the differences in desktop keyboards. I have a really hard time with smooth or overly quiet keyboards because I, I can't hear and I can't feel the the reaction to that key press, and so I find I, I mistype a lot more. Um, like I've got a Chromebook that has a, an amazingly quiet keyboard but I can't mm -hmm. feel it. Um, it, yep. it. It doesn't like send the signal back up my fingertip. And you know, like I, I've got the clackiest desktop keyboard that I can get just so that that tactile feedback actually tells me I did the thing right. Um, so I, I've always found that kind of interesting and then also just kind of exciting that there isn't just one kind of laptop keyboard. It's not just like a butterfly switch or a membrane switch or you know, building in the extra depth in the chassis to put in a more mechanical style switch. Um, it, it's, it's, it's been really exciting seeing options play out for people that want those different tactile responses. Yeah, and I think for us, you know, the key goal here was, of course, this being, uh, I think, not only a gaming-centric keyboard, but a keyboard that you want to be able to use consistently in terms of kind of the tactility and the productivity element and just kind of the overall feel. Here you can kind of see an internal kind of composition uh, design there for the optical switch, that 100 million, um, the uh, travel distance, right, the per-key lighting. So I think it's a really, really awesome design to be able to introduce for this 2021 design iteration and specifically for the SCAR, uh, where I think that's a key benefit if you want that optical mechanical keyboard. But of course, if you're really happy and there's tons of users that for years have loved the current overstroke membrane-based keyboard, which we've kept, uh, we've done a lot of optimization already on mm -hmm. that um, keyboard. It's important to even keep in mind that there are even things like uh, the curved keycap design. There's a lot of things in terms of feel and performance yeah. was already really solid on that. And we kind of carried over that design uh, kind of win and design thinking and kind of implemented that, but with even a higher performing technology, right? Um, and so the last part here is going to be, um, I can get a little bit closer here because I don't think I have a secondary shot, but I do want to show kind of just some cool little layout elements here. So if we switch over here, uh, going back over on the keyboard there, of course, you can see the power button. You can see that nice little translucent design that's carried through internally, right? Um, 
but you'll also notice things that are kind of like separated. If you notice, there's actually clear points of separation in terms of the keyboard. So that's kind of where you know that there's grouped targeted spaces to where you can action item on things, where you can see things like you have the fan control, snipping, you have actual brightness values. Um, mm -hmm. As we kind of continue through that there, you can see that we have a dedicated kind of section here that's a little bit more kind of focused for certain types of functionality. So your microphone, your volume level, again, a fan profiling, the ROG Armory Crate software, and again, separation right here uh, for things like the brightness levels for the keyboard and the Asus Aura Sync. So these things like this, when you talk about these points of separation, these dedicated keys, then the kind of the larger arrow keys optimally placed down here at the bottom, they're all part of the experience. Even this like little break so that your hands know that you're moving into the kind of that um, at arrow key section, that's all helping to enhance the overall, I think, usability and the layout design within the keyboard. Um, and it's not something you conventionally will see actually on all standard um, kind of 15 inches. And many times you'll actually see kind of just like the keyboard cramped in yeah. and all the keys might be present there, but you don't necessarily have this kind of design thinking layout to go, hey, if I'm going to action these items, I kind of know exactly where they are and I can kind of feel them out. Um, and I think that really makes a lot of sense. Well, and, and the dedicated like media and volume controls are huge. I mean, I'm 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 spoiled by mobile. Like I have a volume <laughs> rocker on my phone. My tablets have volume rockers. It's the thing I adjust most frequently. Yeah, you know, like if I'm listening to music, you know, subtle differences between tracks. I'm trying to to kind of account for that. It always drives me crazy when volume becomes like a function key. <laughs> kind yeah, of no, uh, you definitely. I think having essentially, essentially uh, elements on a laptop like this where it makes sense that you want to be able to have that one touch fan profile, you want to have the one touch system yeah. tuning, you know, a uh, software, right? You want to be able to customize things. It makes sense. And this kind of is carried through even externally. Um, you know, we, we already talked about the external, but I did, I didn't know that, you know, there's also design thinking and how we've even laid out the actual laptop. So if we take a look here at the sides, this is gonna be your analog line level uh, output, right? So something like your headphone. Um, we also do have a smart amplification built into this line level output. So you actually get crisp, clear, uh, good quality audio. I've, I can tell you even testing something like a little bit of a better quality, like a planner magnetic, like an H400 yeah. or something like that. You can drive <laughs> that off directly this line level output. But of course, you know, we've got great, you know, headsets that are natively USB-C that have their own DAC and amp so that you could run digitally. Uh, but you know, whatever, kind of headphone experience you want, whether you want to go digital or you want to go analog, you have that available to you, right? Two USB um, uh, type A ports that are there. And of course that's been placed optimally well suited. So if you have them right here, and of course I'm gaming, right? There's nothing that's gonna stick out here. There's nothing that's right. on the left-hand side. So I can have, you know, nice setup right here. I can get ready and I can keep this nice tight and compact, right? And when we go to the back right here, we've got all the kind of key connections. So going over from right here, Here's the power connection. Here's gigabit ethernet, HDMI. Here's my USB-C port. This USB-C port does a lot of lifting. So this is a high-speed <laughs> USB-C port. It also supports USB PD up to 100 watts. So that's pretty cool because again, if I wanted to take this switch, this is you know this is lightweight and yeah. pretty lightweight you know comparatively. But I could put this into a bag, and if I didn't want to take you know the 240 watt adapter, which I think I've got the 240 watt adapter here. Um, we actually reduced it for this generation. It's even smaller it's, than the prior generation. If you actually look at it, it that's smaller, it's, but it's still a chunky boy. I mean, you got a lot of power yeah, going through it, yeah. It's pretty compact. If I actually were to show you the 240 watt <laughs> from 2020, <laughs> let's see if I can get it in frame there. There's yeah. 240 watt. <laughs> oh, you wow. You can see the difference. Yeah. How 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 much actually one is significantly um, smaller exactly. than the other. The surface so, area is one thing, but seeing that it's what yeah. I mean, what and would you say if is you it's like compare it there to a, a, you know a phone. You actually, <laughs> it's actually not that bad. It's it's, it's pretty actually close. pretty reasonable in terms of it. But if you don't want to take this with you, the cool thing is you could take something just like this. You could take you know if you're putting in your backpack a small just bag, you could take like a hundred watt you know, um, USB PD charger that you can yeah. charge your phone, your laptop all with. Now keep in mind, 100 watts is not gonna give you, of course, gaming 
performance. Mm -hmm. It's not designed to power the GPU, but it can give you top off abilities to be able to essentially just extend the operating lifespan if you were using this more kind of as a general laptop, right? Non-gaming workload. Um, or alternatively, you know, if you're maybe on the very kind of cutting edge as, a, you know, being a mobile enthusiast, you might even have something like this where you've got actually a power bank which supports a 100 watt PD output. Uh, yeah. Many people have a power bank, but it might not support 100 watts. But you yeah. could do that where you could power this unit through that USB-C. No, that that's USB huge. I, I used yeah. to do trade shows. We would we would shoot content, you know, like, hey, we're going hands on with these products. And then we'd have to like fight for power outlets and edit videos on the floor of a convention hall because, you know, the laptop wasn't going to sustain more than like two hours of video editing. And the ability yeah. to like bring one of those um, th those those uh, like wall outlet plug that was huge. But then those batteries got so big we couldn't fly with them. Yeah. They became uh, restricted. So having something in that like um, what what is the TSA requirement now? It's like a hundred watt hour or something. Yeah, I think it's 90, 99 watt hours. I think a hundred is actually technically already even over. This yeah. has been upgraded compared to the previous generation. It can support up to a ninety watt hour on the Scar. You get ninety watt hour battery. On there, um, and some of the uh, more entry models, it might be down to a 50, a 56 watt hour battery. But with mm -hmm. the 90 watt hour, like I said, you can real realistically, under kind of general usage, you can see you know five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten yeah. hours, depending on what you're doing. Um, so it's quite nice. And like I said, having that flexibility with that USB C port, you have traditional high That's speed USB C connectivity. You then have the USB PD support, and this will also support um, direct connectivity to the discrete GPU, um, which you could also use connecting it to an external monitor. Now, towards the end of the stream, we'll touch on that a little bit, but one of the really cool things is you can actually even get higher performance by connecting directly to the GP with an external monitor. So if you kind of got like a, a desktop replacement kind of setup and you're pairing with something like a, a great display like we've got here with our ROG uh, Strix G-Sync compatible monitors, you can go ahead and use that output as well. Um, you have the HDMI, which is routed towards the integrated graphics. And then, um, where was I? Think, oh, and then one last port, right? So yeah, right. so again, to recap, um, power, gigabit ethernet, uh, HDMI, USB PD output along uh, with, of course, display output. So USB-C, uh, what's called alt alternative display, and then high speed USB, and then another type A port. So type A, two type A here, so three, so a total of four ports plus that. And then of course, integrated into this, you of course have Wi-Fi 6, latest generation standard. Um, and of course, you also have the latest generation Bluetooth specification. So, you know, in terms of connectivity, everything you could really want is, you know, kind of been baked in there, right? So you're good to go in that regard. Um, good deal. So give me one second here. Uh, I but I, I really have enjoyed seeing that kind of wraparound. Uh, we, we kind of took for granted that the two sides of your laptop would be where you would put all the ports. And uh, the, the, the more that I would try to use those types of products out on the go, the more, I mean, like what you were talking about, it, it feels like such an infomercial problem to describe. You know, has this ever happened to you? Your mouse can't get close enough to the side of your keyboard. But that kind of does influence like what it is that you're trying to do and, and how you're trying to work. And especially like, if you've ever had to do anything like a shared workspace where you're, where yeah. you're kind of um, you know, getting, moving around different cubicles from, um, from day to day. You don't know what your 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 tabletop's going to look like. Having that kind of uh, design consideration helps quite a bit with um, yeah. The uh, practical you're, you're, yeah, you're 100 percent right. And when we talk, I'll actually a little in a little bit here about the audio design. You'll see that there's even cool things there that we have, like our ASUS AI noise canceling, which also can be supplemented with a lot of the key technologies that NVIDIA also has implemented within the NVIDIA. Uh, broadcast software, which can offer RTX voice along with, you know, of course, um, you know, advanced uh, green yeah. screen and follow, uh, uh, follow face tracking and kind of a lot of other really cool elements. But um, the like, kind of last part here, just recapping kind of the external design period, and I wanted to kind of just reshow a little bit of a close up shot there of the bezel. So kind of clearly, people clearly understand that difference in terms of that, that lighting is unique to uh, this higher end model, right? So on the mm -hmm. star there, you get that uh, bezel lighting. So that is just a really cool kind of design aesthetic that's present on there that you get a little bit kind of an additional look and feel to elevate the overall kind of setup once it's uh, been customized. And you can fully, of course, customize that all through the Armor Crate software. And we'll be showing that in a little bit there. So, um, 
I, 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 I love this trend in in gaming hardware design in general, but especially for laptops where gaming itself has kind of evolved and morphed into a social activity, a streaming activity, business. Um, yep. and, and it, it's not a, it, it's not enough just to say, I've got this one box that does this one thing in playing games really, really well. Um, it, it's, it, it's now this multifaceted multi-purpose, um, solution where it, it needs to be flexible enough to do all these other things. And then, oh yeah, it's still designed to, to play your games. What really good with the high frame rates and whatnot. Um, it, it, it's, it's definitely kind of, uh, even for my own workflow, like, you know, you, you can spend a little bit more and it's really good for me to edit videos when I travel. And I guess I can play a few games on it too. It kind of helps sell, yeah. sell that when I'm talking to my wife. And I think that's the, and one cool thing that I will say here is, you know, if you really take a look at kind of the, the styling, right. I, yes, it has that ROGI, but I think the cool thing is that, um, you know, you can really customize this to be something that can really fit again, like we talked a little bit earlier about kind of who's this for, right? This right. can really work towards a gamer, it can work towards a content creator, it can work towards maybe somebody that's going back to school, whether it's a physical campus or online, maybe somebody that's taking, you know, some uh, edification courses as well, right? Because you can really kind of customize the experience. And a cool thing, again, that doesn't get maybe talked about, and we'll show this a little bit later when we get into the UI element for the software, but we have actually something that we call scenario profiling. And our scenario profiling is actually quite deep. You can literally tailor everything from like the RGB lighting profile to the fan profile to even the on-screen visual display adjustments all within a scenario. So that means that you could even attach this to an application. So if take, for instance, I open up Microsoft Word, I could have my actual blue light filtering mode become enabled. I could have all the RGB lighting turned off or I could have it set to white. I could have the actual fan profile set to silent. And then the moment, let's say I open up Cyberpunk, it could change. I could go to full, maybe reactive based lighting. I could then actually go to maybe my uh, turbo fan profile. I could go to actually, um, you know, maybe the default vivid or game uh, mode profile for the visual display. All of this can be customized dynamically. So you can really kind of toggle back and forth to really kind of, kind of get this best experience. And that actually segues, I think, really well into one of the next topics I want to jump in here, which is, um, you know, kind of the overall performance and kind of the uh, power design of the laptop. Because you know, with this laptop specifically with a SCAR, really the design intent, especially with something like this, where we've got, you know, 1500, um, 5900HX along with an RTX 3080, um, we really are talking about a high performance part. So there's a lot of challenges when you talk about really trying to be able to offer a high degree of performance, um, you know, to these respective parts, but keep them not only uh, well cooled, but also be able to ensure, I think, reasonable acoustics, right? And so that kind of all comes together in terms of the overall design intent um, with everything from the motherboard to the thermal solution to even the power componentry where, you know, in our prior streams, we've talked about things like power phase design. We actually had to have specialized power phase design for the GPU and for the CPU on this motherboard to be able to be able to offer um, you know, uh, the high level of performance that we have here. So, you know, 80 watts up to for the CPU respectively, and all the way even up to 130 watts uh, for the GPU part uh, when it's taking advantage of our ROG boost technology, which helps to also supplement the NVIDIA dynamic boost technology that's present there. So um, let me go ahead and actually pull up some information here to kind of show you guys so we can kind of concrete some of these design attributes and kind of talk a little bit about that. And definitely if you guys have any questions in this regard, I'd love to see, you know, what, what they might be. So. Um, let me go ahead and first actually pull up a little bit of actually a cool animation here um, to give you a little bit of context behind um, the uh, dynamic boost technology. So uh, I believe I have that here. Let me go ahead and load that up. Okay, great. <clears throat> Okay, uh, so I think JC, I've got this file here that we can go ahead and switch over to. Hi JC, are you still there on the stream? All right guys, so I think, um, we're still waiting there on JC being able to kind of show that there. So we'll, we'll switch over that to in a moment, but I'll go ahead and definitely continue this on here in a second. So um, 
in addition to that, um, you know, when we're talking about the overall kind of design focus here, when it comes to the thermal solution and the power delivery design and everything that kind of correlates to helping to really maximize the performance for the, the laptop, one of the critical parts that was a really cool design implementation that we've been offering on a kind of a range of models has been, hey. Hey, I'm back. So oh, what I great. miss, I got so okay. excited. I don't know what happened, but StreamYard no just kicked uh, me I, out I, of my I, own stream. Yeah, we, <laughs> we, were talking, we were talking about dynamic boosts. I've loaded up actually a little asset here to uh, show let, you. Let me, let me pull this up. Excellent. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm happy to be back for dynamic boost. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, here with Dynamic Boost, you guys can actually see just a little bit of a visualization that allows you to kind of have a sense of kind of the dynamic play. And so this is a, a technology that's part of NVIDIA's Max-Q um, implementation that's part of kind of the overall uh, RTX 30 series. And impressively, this what this helps to do is essentially dynamic balance power distribution between the CPU and between the GPU. So depending on the load, essentially, we can help to increase the overall performance envelope. And this is actually further supplemented by what we call our ROG boost technology, which can help mm -hmm. to extend things even further. And that works through coordinated profiles that we have within the Armory Crate software. Um, and this also, also ties into kind of the totality, the totality of the actual overall kind of thermal design. And so uh, for this generation, we've got a really impressive overall thermal design where we're talking about that there's six heat pipes that are in here. It covers all the key critical components. So everything from the GPU to the CPU to the VRM to the power stages um, are all covered within this unit. We have our what we call our art flow fans uh, that are built in here, which have been continually improved over the years. And we'll dive into kind of some of the cool little design elements that we have in there, along with even kind of a self-cleaning design mechanism that we help to kind of maintain performance over time within uh, the unit. And then of course, the big one that probably a lot of people are kind of impressed by, which is also the uh, application of liquid metal for the CPU, uh, which is an ASUS kind of industry leading uh, design point. It literally, it is something that normally is only literally done manually. So you used to have to maybe uh, self-apply this yourself, but that could actually be a dangerous process because one, um, it's conductive, two, uh, because of its actual viscosity, it could be a little bit more problematic and it could actually run into other spaces. So literally ASUS, we had to spend time and effort to develop custom tooling, machining and production processes to actually be able to automatically administer this. We then had to create a specialized protective barrier mechanism um, to allow the actual liquid metal to not essentially go out and then Furthermore, on top of that, we even had to use a specialized base plate where we have a nickel base plate because of course liquid metal would react differently to a copper traditional base plate. So all these things had to be done yeah. to really be able to help to ensure that we could meet this really high level of uh, cooling performance. So um, let's go ahead and, and take a look at some of these kind of cool little yeah, attributes sure. here. Now, I mean, it's one of those things where you, you, you go to customize or tweak or fine tune your own product is a completely different conversation than mass producing and standardizing that same kind of process. So here you can actually see the application process, right? Um, so layers down, then we actually have to put it on. And then there's actually this spe spe special protective barrier, right, that's put in place. And then from there, you can then see the cooling solution is put on. So this is exclusive. It's only um, an ASUS design implementation. We've even partnered with Thermal Grizzly to be able to use, you know, kind of the leading uh, liquid metal um, interface material. So it's something that we're super proud of, along with mm -hmm. the entirety of what we call the ROG Intelligent Cooling Design Implementation. So Intelli ROG Intelligent Cooling Design, it sounds kind of like this very marketing oriented kind of term, but it's really a holistic kind of perspective to take a look at all the different aspects of how we look at cooling, whether it's not only the aspects of the fan implementation, to the acoustic profiling, to the power distribution, um, to the power handling, all of that kind of goes into um, you know, work in tandem to be able to offer a certain kind of class of experience and a certain class of performance. So um, let me go ahead and, and see if I can bring up some items here to kind of further dive into this a little bit. So give me one second. And definitely if there's any questions on this, because I know there's a lot that kind of is, is, is baked in here, you know, feel free and... Uh, well, and, yeah. and when we get through some of the, you know, some of the conversation also about performance and things like um, we've got this question here from Faraz and we, we kind of touched on this. Does it come with resizable bar enabled? Um, th this is this generation is, is all about f facilitating and maximizing those new kinds of technologies, both from NVIDIA and from um, ASUS's perspective of getting you that kind of performance. 
Yeah, so actually, I think, um, uh, JC, if you want to maybe bring it up, or I think I can share it too. If we head over to actually NVIDIA's product page quickly here, yeah, for sure. Um, if I'll we go over it. to the 30 series laptop, you'll find that there's actually a dedicated portion right there that helps to break down the Max Q centric technologies that are present. And the Max Q, um, essentially third gen Max Q technologies you'll see are Dynamic Boost 2.0, Whisper Mode 2.0, Resizable Bar, and DLSS. And essentially, all those uh, technologies that are present help to essentially give you that best in kind of class experience. So you can see right there, those are actually the, the four pieces right there. So you do have the resizable bar, you have the DLSS support, which if you're kind of not keeping track of it, this is an amazing technology that really allows you to kind of even have a higher level of performance across a wide range of games. So whether you're talking about games like you know Red Dead Redemption, uh, Call of Duty, Doom Eternal, and many other titles have now phased this in. And NVIDIA is, of course, consistently working with, of course, game partners to be able to increase the games that are offered within DLSS, as well as similarly things like RTX, which is inherent to, of course, the 30 series GPUs. That's why they're called RTX 30 series, right? Is you have that ray tracing. And so, um, you know, for games like that, where you can both put RTX and DLSS and then be able to, you know, leverage a resizable bar, you're really talking about kind of a great synergy. And then the whisper mode technology, which I think is a, a little bit up if you go there, also kind of works very um, uh, uh, kind of in conjunction with dynamic boost. So whisper mode mm -hmm. um, really is that kind of balancing act in terms of offering a quiet level of operation. And we've tuned that along with our silent profiling design that we're literally talking, you know, sub 21 dB, you know, sub 20 dB. There's actually a little measurement option within Armory Crate that'll show you that as you switch over into different profiles, what the kind of projected decibel output is for the system. So you really do get this amazing quiet level operation uh, when the system is under these light workload environments. Um, and that's helping to, that's helped to be enabled by the whisper mode technology. And the dynamic boost, as I talked about, is that distribution essentially of the intelligently, there's a essentially a balancing of between power that is getting shunt, shunted over to one versus the other. And the reason why that's important to understand, especially within a laptop environment, is that you have a fixed kind of power envelope, right? You know, you've got mm -hmm. that 240 watt power adapter, right? Whereas maybe on a larger laptop, um, you could have more, you could have 280 watt, or you could even have dual, there's been laptops that, you know, we've even produced yeah. <laughs> dual AC adapters, right? And of course, and in desktops, you have much higher power envelopes, right? You're talking about, you know, 500, 600, 750 watts. So when you have a kind of a fixed wattage profile, it's very important to be able to try to maximize where the power is going under what type of scenario so that you can kind of get that best balance in terms of the performance and experience. So, um, yeah, uh, let me go ahead. Here, I, I got the intelligent cooling design here. So let me uh, see if I can bring this up for you guys. Give me one second here. Yeah, I mean, I, we, we had some comments and some conversation back and forth, just like talking about the difference between building a, a desktop gaming PC and the, the competitive factor of having all of this stuff in a portable chassis and a portable shell. And it's always still, I mean, like what you were just mentioning, Dynamic Boost addresses one of the compromises of packing you know, high performance guts into something that's, that's thin and portable and easy to travel with. Um, a friend of mine, and, that, had, and that's the key. That's the really the yeah. key part. You nailed it. There is that here. You know, um, there of course can be even higher power envelope configurations, and of course higher performing laptops, which we also produce. Right, if you wanted to have something like an RTX 3080 that even had a higher performance envelope, right. But um, the question there is that we're still looking to be able to maintain an experience where, like I said, you've got things like a reasonable power adapter, you have actually a certain level of portability that you have available to you and a certain level of battery life. And so that's really, I think the important part is that this unit, we've tried to really balance that to be able to offer, you mm -hmm. know, desktop class replacement, desktop class, um, you know, performance, um, but at the same time, still being on offer a quality laptop based experience, right? Um, so if we take a look here, this is kind of a little bit of the ethos of the ROG intelligent cooling design where you can see we've got the arc flow fan design um oh sorry there we go the arc flow fan design the self-cleaning um, design implementation uh the zero db technology which like i said is when the system essentially is un running underneath a certain temperature footprint essentially it'll be essentially silent right um the cooling zone which is a key part um you know talk a little bit about there but it's sensibly looking at how the actual thermals are distributed across the actual chassis uh, the liquid metal application and then of course the heat sink assembly itself which is um, a really big achievement, you know, ultra thin, you know, fins that we have there to help to improve the dissipation performance along with the four outlets and the six heat pipes. So um, 
let's go ahead and pull pull away here quickly from this uh, share screen. And I want to go back over here on this, um, and I'll, I'll come back to that in a little bit. But when we take a look here at the laptop, right? Again, when we're talking, look at this kind of entirety of the screen. What we mean by kind of a cool zone design is that. This area right here, we pretty much keep this very cool. It's not going to be hot to the touch at all. And so that's important because when you're talking about laying your hands down, right, and your arms and your palms, right, or something along those lines, or even here, your palm to this area, you don't want this to get overtly hot, right? Yeah. You don't want to kind of be sweating too much in that space. So that's an area that we've maintained a cooler level. We've also balanced the actual airflow design that here under the WAS key, there's actually venting that occurs because you're constantly putting your fingers in that space there. So that's going to be a cooler level of operation. And when we talked about the actual over airflow design, uh, if you actually go to our product page, we have a nice little simulated mm -hmm. view, but we'll show you guys some, some little assets here in a moment. But um, here you can see you have one vent, right? Here you have another vent. Here you have another vent. And here you have another vent. So there's four vents that are built into this unit to pretty much help to expel the air there, expel the L out there, and then you have your intake there at the top. So it really does help to offer um, a very, very well thought out cooling design implementation. And of course, there's also some venting implementation that's also built into the base of the laptop as well. Yeah, I think if you probably keep scrolling down, it's probably there in terms of kind of the, the cooling design, but we can also jump into some of the um, assets <laughs> that I have here. I'm, I'm getting there. You're, the we'll website there. is very we'll pretty. <laughs> Oh, okay, yeah, so here, you here you can see, yeah, so here it's noting, of course, the liquid metal application that we um, talked about. I think you can, yeah, hit, you can see there kind of a little bit of an animation um, that kind of shows you the airflow characteristic in terms of how that works on the laptop, right? And it's quite effective. Um, you will even get a little, a little bit maybe more of a performance boost if you elevate this a little bit because there's a little bit that it goes on underneath. It's not mm -hmm. dramatic and it's not definitely required. Keep in mind that, of course, with those, uh, bumpers that we have on this model, you even have a little bit of an elevated des right. design already inherently there that's helping to maximize that as well. Oh, and then just yeah, and there's of course a video that you metal. can check out that has, of course, the information regarding the uh, liquid metal application. And so we show the little animation practice, but this little video actually shows you a, a little bit of kind of the tooling and the design and the overall implementation process that we have here. And this has actually been further refined because this is uh, from the first generation that we have where it was implemented. But overall, uh, it's a very cool technology that we're really that's, excited that's about. That's pretty firing. crazy to see that automated. Um, because again, from having done a few enthusiast builds where uh, the application of that has been very precious um, do you have to be really careful about how we were uh, we were installing that? Um, that's that's th that that seems like a, a more profound design challenge than um, than I think a lot of people will fully understand. A hundred percent. You know, um, a lot of what we do, like I said, remember we talked about that nano coding, right? Two years in terms of the design and development process. Yeah. Custom tooling to be able to have to be designed and developed. Even things like um, the Wi-Fi technology, where we have a specialized rain boost design that we talked about, was also an extensive undertaking. There's a lot of things that you're always going to find within these products that we're talking about. That you know, they're going you're going to see them as a, a spec somewhere on the page, or you're going to see them somebody right. kind of sometimes just rattle them off. But there's a lot of kind of work that we've put in to try to really be able to offer an experience um, that provides hopefully value to our users. And this is really driven from feedback, again, from users in the community, uh, from reviewers, where we've tried to kind of look and say, hey, we see enthusiasts are doing this. Is there a way that we can provide them that level of experience, but from a factory status, right, uh, with the confidence of knowing I don't need to do anything? out of the box, I'm already getting pretty much the best thermal performance possible because I've got super high performing, you know, heat pipes. I've got these high performing customized fans. I've got custom fan curves if I want to be able to tune and tailor all of this, right? And I've even got liquid metal, right? Right. Um, so uh, it just reminds we, me of one of our very, very first conversations talking about motherboard design. And we got like down this rabbit hole of like de-litting CPUs. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> just... Uh, you got to take this stuff seriously. Oh, let me pull this up. You just uh, threw yeah. me another slide here. So this is a little internal shot just because I didn't want to have to take apart uh, the laptop, although it is actually pretty easy to access. Uh, you know, it's not too complicated. Um, I just wanted to kind of show you a little bit of a hierarchy of what that um, thermal assembly looks like. So you can actually see there where we've got the six copper heat pipes, um, the four fans, 
And then, um, like I said, the target here was to be able to uh, have about approximately about 45 dB even under that turbo mode. It can be even quieter like that, like I said, under performance or some of the other scenarios, right? But that really helps to offer uh, a very high level of performance. The ultra thin copper fins, right? That just helps to re reduce, um, as you can see, resistance. It helps to improve the conductivity and the overall kind of thermal dissipation performance because you essentially have more points of dissipation, right? Um, here you can see just illustration difference. Uh, we do do extensive thermal analysis testing, right? That includes a lot of different scenarios. But keep in mind that, of course, when you talk about the overall uh, thermal scenarios that are important to understand is that you know, you're not running a stress test, right? Well, sometimes media are going to kind of showcase, you know, these worst case scenarios, and they're going to kind of run thermal environments like running a synthetic stress test and, you know, run it for, you know, an hour or something like that and give you right. thermal results. It is valid because you're testing the thermal um, solution, but it's not the same as you jumping in and actually playing Warzone or playing Valorant or playing CSGO, um, Cyberpunk or in the Blind Forest, you know, Forza, um, you know, or Halo, you know, it doesn't matter, right? Any one of these games, you're generally going to probably find is in most scenarios in the performance and turbo profile, you're going to probably be somewhere in like the mid 70s to generally probably under a ADC under full gaming load, um, which is quite impressive considering that again, you're running something like an RTX 3080, right, right. with a 5900 HX um, that is having these boost clocks, right, where you have super high level of performance available to you. So uh, when you also consider that if you've got a lower spec configuration, like a 3070 or 3060, it's going to even be cooler than that, right? So um, you don't necessarily have to be concerned. I, I feel very comfortable that you guys can feel comfortable and confident that if you make the investment in a SCAR, you're going to have a stable and reliable, well-cooled system that also isn't super loud. And I really appreciate that, that like I said, I can have you know, a system that is not super loud in terms of that. Um, the last thing I want to just touch on here in the thermal before we jump into sure. audio is going to be, um, actually, let me go back here to show the uh, fan blade design because it's pretty cool to kind of see the evolution of what we've done here. So um, give me one second here. And let me just bring this up. There we go. Sorry. Okay. Um, and so this is what we call our, the our, kind of the arc flow based uh, fans, uh, fan design. Uh, there we and go. so this is kind of really a combination of, of different things. So one, it's the actual, um, the fan blade diameter, right? Um, the actual tip design, airflow optimization, and even tone. And you'll actually see something that's called anti-resonance. Um, you'll see that there's actually kind of a different design. And the reason why we have an anti-resonance design is this all kind of goes together to be able to provide better stability because of the speed that the fans rotate. And you can see a variable thickness, but it also will actually change the tonal characteristics of the way that actually sound moves. If you've ever actually heard certain fans kind of virl up, kind of mm -hmm. or what's called step up or ramp up from one point to another point, um, tone and the pitch can actually be sometimes more noticeable than the pure speed of the fan. And so this, this uh, bionic anti-resonance design was really kind of designed to be able to have a more pleasing tone as we ramp up, but also maintain higher RPM levels if we're cooling in the system. And this actually makes less of a whining sound and more kind of yeah. like a whooshing type of sound that is more pleasing because it is easier to note, even if it's not loud, like a sharper pitch tone, than it is to notice a similar kind of uh, loudness but maybe where that tone and that pitch isn't as sharp, it's a little bit kind of more subdued, it's a little bit more muffled. So it is something that we have really tried to carefully look at that um, even when you take a look at kind of measurements where people will measure, quote unquote, the noise output, which I think you will find that we have very, very good performance in this regard, um, there's actually that kind of tonal measurement that is actually, I find equally as important is how pleasing is the sound. No, more important. I mean, like we were saying earlier in the stream, that that's absolutely why I, I one of the main reasons why I parted with uh, my last creator focused laptop was I couldn't you, you know, like you realize you're changing your behavior to wear certain kinds of headphones. I was wearing certain kinds of earplugs. It was uncomfortable to work with. And that peak frequency when the fans would really kick on. I mean, it sounded like a jet engine and it was just kind of piercing. Um, and as like, I, I can't keep this laptop if, if I can only use it while wearing my heaviest active noise canceling headphones, <laughs> like I, I need to do something different here. Um, it, it's a, it's a consideration where just measuring the loudness is insufficient to describe what it's like to really sit in front of 
a, the, a whining pitch or a jet engine kind of pitch day in and day out. I 100% agree there. And so the main thing that, you know, if some of this is kind of going over your head is that, you know, the main value point is that we've tried to really be kind of conscientious about looking at not only the thermal performance, but the acoustic performance of the fans and how they translate. And, um, you know, lastly, I think this is kind of a cool slide to just kind of show you the, the continual evolution. This actually kind of also aligned with, we were a launch partner with NVIDIA and the original Max-Q launch for, you know, thin and, thin and light laptops, right, where we first introduced uh, the Zephyrus concept of having these high-performance GPUs, high-performance CPU, and a thin and lightweight kind of body. And this mm -hmm. has evolved to now have different kind of permutations. But what you can see here is kind of the evolution of the fan blades uh, that we have here on these Artflow fans, where we went from 53 blades that, of course, the thickness, and all the way up to now 84 blades down to that 0.1 millimeter. And you can see consistently improving the overall airflow and the performance, and also even having to do things like using liquid crystal polymer, which is used exclusively only a very small number of entire fans that are produced in the market um, because it, they allow for excellent rigidity and torsion performance because the fan is actually so thin and spinning so fast that if you don't use this high quality liquid crystal polymer, you can actually have deformation to the actual mm. fan blade itself over time. So, oh, interesting. Um, all, all this kind of stuff has kind of been thought about, you know, in terms of the overall kind of design and the evaluation, right? Um, so, you know, lastly, before we kind of get ready to go here into the audio and then, uh, you know, just talk about some last kind of general points is, mm -hmm. um, you know, the kind of the UI environment, I think, is an important one to kind of talk about because um, not every single actually manufacturer will give you the flexibility to really kind of be able to gu dive into this and be able to kind of tweak and tune um, the kind of fan experience that you have on these uh, units. And so the really cool thing is that through the Armory Crate software, we give you customized profiles, which allow you to maximize the performance for the laptop in a lot of great ways. So, you know, by default, you can just shift the unit into performance mode, or you can also go ahead and go into turbo mode, or you can even go into manual mode. In manual mode, you can even customize things like the power target envelope for the CPU. You have a multi-point fan curve, which if you want to even have higher levels of cooling so that you can have higher boost clock performance, you know, taking advantage of the NVIDIA GPU boost and the dynamic boost technology that we noted on earlier, that's all kind of available to you. So if we uh, take a look at this UI element here, uh, another kind of slide here before we actually dive into the ROG software a little bit later. Well, and again, it's another uh, small consideration when we say things like desktop replacement. You know, we, we take targeted power and cooling and, and fan speed and noise for granted on, on desktops. And yeah. now we're we're entertaining the same the same kind of uh, high performance output on a laptop. Uh, those kinds of considerations make sense when when you're trying to factor in a desktop or a laptop purchase. Yeah, and I and I think also the thing here is too. We also just see um, from the kind of the community of users that they want the flexibility and the granularity for these type of options, and so that's our kind of a goal, especially with a model like this where we are definitely targeting it to, you know, gamers uh, that are passionate about having kind of fine tuned performance that works for them and the way that they want it. Then we want to give them those type of options. So you can see here, if you were to open up kind of the Armory Crate software, you can go in, you can set it to something standard like the Windows preset profile, great for just general usage when you're talking about kind of general windows and application usage mm -hmm. um, silent uh, which can be kind of tweaked in different ways to either just fully use the igpu or still leverage the discrete rtx 30 series gpu that you have on there and again they're very quiet operation that you can target within silent profiling where essentially it's either those fans aren't even spinning uh, to where they're very quiet uh, you know based on a minimal load and then you can shift into performance which is i'd say the overall great kind of just general kind of preset if you just want Still very quiet performance for anything, but you want really great grainy performance. Performance preset is really, I think, the overall kind of best option. And then if you're kind of a user that, you know, is willing to deal with a little bit of a louder system, where I'd still say it's okay to use, even without a headset, <laughs> into turbo and have higher level of performance, then you could jump into turbo. So if you really kind of want to get that best level of performance, you could do that. And keep in mind that turbo will actually extend certain things like our ROG OC boost, and you'll actually have mm -hmm. some overclocking that occurs to the GPU boot, GPU to give even higher level of performance. And then of course the manual mode where you've got options you can go in and you know you can tweak and tune things um, to even kind of take things further. So that kind of see, you can see kind of complements and kind of works with the entirety of the thermal design that we've uh, talked about on the laptop, right? 
Um, so actually here I can show this, uh, sorry, I should have left that up there, but um, <laughs> if you guys wanna see here specifically what we're talking about in terms of some of the boost characteristics, um, this would be an example of some of these boost characteristics. So you can actually see here um, kind of oh, what is gotcha. achieved under the standard versus kind of the boost and then even kind of a manual, right? And so you can see how we are dynamically kind of looking at all this kind of information to really be able to offer a higher level of performance. And this kind of tuning, it's an exclusive part of what we'll find why the ROG Strix Scar laptops perform so well in benchmarks um, mm -hmm. and in kind of real world gaming tests is because we have these different performance attributes at really helping to maximize the overall performance. And um, one thing I'll actually show here is um, actually, I don't have a video file for it, but I think I have, yeah, here we go. Um, we have a cool, and I'll, I guess I can show this when we get into the uh, UI, uh, UI kind of portion here after um, the audio part, but mm -hmm. um, here we go, sorry. Let me open this up here. And uh, you'll see this is actually a recording within the Armory Crate software. Armory Crate has a very kind of, um, a deep actually recording uh, implementation where you can actually like monitor all the key attributes through your system. You can have them selectively overlaid. You can monitor them over a period of time. You can even have like imports where you could compare and contrast different levels if you wanted to do stuff like that. Nice. But you can see right here, like the GPU boost frequency we tracked, it went up to 1900 megahertz um, when under gaming under that kind of, um, I think this was under the turbo preset. But this is cool because you can actually check all this out yourself, right? So right. we give you kind of this one-stop utility to be able to set the performance, be able to measure the performance, compare it, and then even kind of, uh, you know, like I said, compare and contrast, right? Because you can yeah. save it and then you can import it, have comparison views. And you can see there's a lot of different options that are there. So if you want to make it a little bit easier and go like, I'm just interested in the maybe GPU temperature and the GPU frequency, you can uncheck what you don't need to. Um, there are some users that, you know, they'll, you can, of course, use third-party utilities and third-party software. But the great thing is here, this is all validated by us. It's designed to work with this. It's not some other piece of software you have to worry about downloading. It's all self-contained sure. within and, the Armory Crate. Uh, and is that the, the data in Armory Crate that that kind of helps contribute to the to the power profiles that the user? So that all happens dynamically. That's just a great right. way okay. to kind of realize. So that just helps you visualize. It helps you visualize it because sometimes you might turn you might have performance mode on, right? And then you might switch into, um, let's say, turbo mode, but you might not be able to clearly notice like what, what am I actually what's occurring. And so this is a much right. easier way that you can directly kind of see, oh, I can see, you know, maybe this is going up and this is going up and this is occurring in a more visual kind of uh, method, right? Because otherwise, the only other kind of clear illustration you might have is that you can use things like the GeForce Experience, which does offer now a, a performance overlay as well. It's, it's kind of similar to some of the items that we have on Arbor Crate, uh, but it can also give you like FPS readout. But that might not give you the indicator on terms of like the thermals and the frequency information that you're looking for. Right, so right. this just helps to give you that much more information. And again, if you don't want it, you don't have to jump into it, but it's a cool level of kind of software that you have available. Um, so the, the next part that I did want to touch on here is uh, audio. So yeah. you know, I'm a really big passionate audio guy and we did a lot of kind of optimization for this generation to really try to be able to improve upon the, um, the audio experience. And I think really, in my opinion, of course, I'm going to be biased, but I think offer <laughs> really overall the best in class audio on a 15 inch laptop. Um, we really have done an amazing job where we've got essentially four speakers that are on here. So they're optimally tuned where you've got essentially uh, these upward firing kind of coming towards you and then also downward firing and then optimally placed as well. And so with the two, two uh, excuse me, the two speakers that are tweeters and then the two mid-range and woofers along with a smart amplifier that helps to offer a really rich, dynamic and well-balanced sound profile. We also worked with Adobe and we have the full Adobe um, Atmos software experience that's enabled to you here that you can go in. And even if you're somebody that isn't necessarily a fan of virtualized sound, there's a lot of presets that are available in Adobe Atmos from a full multi-band EQ to kind of um, treble and warmth and kind of customization presets where you can tailor the audio to your preference. And I think that's the strength there is that even if you don't necessarily want to leverage maybe spatial audio adjustments to maybe have a mm -hmm. little bit kind of more filled or dynamic sound, um, you can still customize, like I said, that multiband EQ or kind of certain uh, targeted presets. And I will tell you that definitely listen back to music and games going in and enabling the spatial options that are enabled in Dolby Atmos can actually really, uh, I think, and even improve um, the separation 
tonality at uh, higher stages and um, kind of detailing representation. So it's something that I'd say it's worthwhile trying out um, mm -hmm. and really helps to elevate the experience. Um, for the SCAR model also, we do have a what we call a smart amp design. And kind of the important thing to understand when you talk about a smart amplification design and really what it's providing you is gonna be two key things. One, uh, louder volume level and less distortion. So the smart amp is helping to monitor essentially the, the voltage and the amplification that's occurring to those speakers. When there isn't essentially kind of a consistently monitored and well-balanced amplification, you can have a louder speaker, but it will distort. And so right. that doesn't really provide you a good experience, right? You could go sit like the speakers to like 60 or 70 or 80, but once they get that, you're gonna hear kind of a distortion and kind of a breakup in terms of the mid-range, the separation in terms of the bass and the overall detailing. Um, here, the speakers do really well, even as you go into louder volume levels. And as I noted in the kind of almost very beginning of the stream, the SCAR also has a smart amplification, uh, yeah, am I on the right side? <laughs> on the <laughs> line level output. So if you connect a set of you know analog headphones, um, like let's say our ROG Delta Core or ROG Strix Core uh, headphones, then you will also get amplification there on that line level output. So um, let me see if I can just quickly show the UI there for the Dolby software. Yeah, for and, sure. No, um, but Dolby's been kind of a big deal, especially what with um, you know a, a number of services starting to spruce up the quality of their streams. Everyone's looking at lossless and spatial now because of Apple Music. Um, it's always oh, for sure. And, for and you have movies. tons of streaming services that are now supporting higher resolution support. Yeah. So Spotify is going to have uh, Spotify HD. Hi there's their course yeah. um, already uh, other titles, uh, excuse me, other services where you have a course title, you have Amazon Music HD, um, you know, many other services where you can actually stream um, audio in a higher resolution format. And this unit does actually support um, higher resolution. So let me actually see if I can bring up the UI element just so you guys can kind of see what this looks like here. There we yeah, go. if you want to play with Apple Music Spatial, I just think it's funny that like an Asus laptop is probably the best way to do it. So <laughs> uh, I think this should work. So let's see if we can go ahead and cut to that. That does. Look oh, like yeah, here. Let me let me throw this over here. Yeah, we got it. So you can actually see here we're now in the uh, Dolby Atmos UI environment that's on the laptop. You can see you actually have different um, kind of options that are available to you. You can kind of go through a, a setup option, which will bring you through all your kind of your Windows Direct options here. Um, and if you actually are tuning things, it's as simple as down there at the bottom, you can actually see right there where you just can enable Dolby Atmos for headphones, which is normally the default. Oh, nice. That's actually what would happen when you connect it. It would automatically default to that, right? Um, but you can see that there would be different options if you had headphones attached. But here you can then go to settings and you'll see that there's actually different options that are available to you, right? So dynamic game, movie, music, custom options, including voice, right? And so those are all adjustable parameters that you have available. And we've already tuned this specifically for the actual headphones, excuse me, um, for the speakers that are within the laptop, right? So nice. that gives you... Um, Kind of a little bit there in terms of that and speaking terms of the audio too if we go into the armory crate software here oh, and we go nice. into the ui environment um then we can actually go to our system and another kind of audio portion is going to be here within the asus ai noise canceling technology and so here you can go ahead and turn this off and on you can see that it's a two-way so you can do it for the integrated microphones that are on the laptop as well as you could also have this be applied to any other type of microphone that you have on your system, whether it's an analog or a digital microphone. Mm -hmm. And you also see that you have the output. So both input and output can be processed. So incoming audio and outgoing audio. And you can also adjust essentially the level of kind of uh, post-processing. This is based off of advanced machine learning algorithms. It has a very low CPU utilization footprint, essentially almost a non doesn't almost affect any CPU utilization. Wow. Um, so it's a great option that whether you're jumping into a game using TeamSpeak, using um, you know Steam, using um, whatever your application you're utilizing, um, or you're maybe jumping into you know a web meeting or, or something along those lines, For then sure. it would also work. Um, so so it's unlike a great unlike RTX Voice, this is this is CPU bound. Yeah, so RTX Voice will still actually have an overhead. Um, I think they're both great options. RTX Voice is part of kind of the entirety of the NVIDIA broadcast software suite. Yeah. Um, in our testing, though, we have actually measured the actual performance delta difference that 
the impact to resident CPU performance is smaller for AIC, AI noise cancelling than it is for RTX voice. But RTX voice is also though part of a broader suite. So if you want to take advantage of other things like they have with their green screen, the right. face tracking, you know, noise removal and many other elements that are there, it's kind of part of that unifying and that works off the advanced of course, architecture and acceleration options that are built in the RTX 30 series GPUs, really great set of options that are available to you. Mm -hmm. But here, if you just specifically want to uh, manage this without having to maybe run that overhead of just uh, RTX um, uh, broadcast, then you don't have to worry about that, right? Very cool. Okay. Um, so that I think wraps up the audio section. And I think actually while we're here in the UI, we can actually take a yeah. little bit of tour of just kind of giving you some of the cool kind of options that we have here from a management standpoint in terms of how you can kind of tweak and tune and kind of tailor the experience. So you can see down here, here's our different kind of performance presets that are available to you. So silent mm -hmm. performance turbo um, manual. These are all kind of customization elements here. Um, let me see if I can plug in the actually laptop here so we can make sure to have all the options available to us. So give me <laughs> one second here. Are you, are you using that USB power delivery or is this a... Uh... So um, you can see right there, actually it shifted over and you can saw automatically it went into performance mode. So we have a lot of intelligent things that we've built into the SCAR to really optimize the experience. So there are cer certain things like here, like we have power panel saver. Um, this is an important option. That what actually happens here is that when you switch over to battery, a lot of people don't realize that the battery can be affected by the refresh rate of the screen. So of course, you know, we talked about earlier how we have, you know, these SCAR models, you can have like a 300 hertz screen or 165 hertz um, mm -hmm. 1440p screen, right? These are fantastic, but you don't necessarily need it to be at 165 hertz if you're just, <laughs> you know, surfing the internet. So the panel saver will drop down to essentially just 60 hertz when the moment that you disconnect the AC adapter, right? Um, you have the ability to customize panel overdriving. Um, that helps to provide you the lowest response time, but sometimes you can have certain overshoot um, kind of variables that can be, and some people maybe prefer the experience visually, don't need maybe as necessarily as fast response, so you can customize panel overdrive. If you're right. looking for the absolute longest battery life and you want to force to just use the um, integrated graphics, then you can go ahead and switch off to iGPU exclusive mode. You can see there's a full readout of kind of all your key elements right here. And if let's say I, I make changes, so let's say I was to go to silent, um, it will actually dim my screen, which I'm seeing, you're not seeing because you're in the UI software, but you can see things like right here, like the CPU and GPU fan, they're not running, the projected DBA measurement, so like 19.5, right? Your, you know, all your kind of core frequency information, we can switch over into different modes. And you can also see things like right here that we even have game launching and other elements right here where oh, you can very customize cool. this. Yeah. You can go in and, and change your um, uh, coordinated profiles, game visual presets, our uh, networking pack, pack worker priority software that's also built in here. And of course, if we uh, switch into uh, the Armory Crate software, of course, the more devices you have, you can manage these devices, but you can see all your customized presets. We have our Asus Or Creator, which will allow you to actually individually control different lighting zones for the laptop, as opposed to these lighting profiles they're all specific to the laptop. So if you set it to like color cycle, it would be for all the lighting uh, items. But if you even wanted a kind of more targeted lighting control, you could break things up more specifically with Aura Creator. So that's a kind of cool option. Um, game visual mode, depending on the presets, essentially are gonna give you different options where you can change things like you might be able to see them here, they're grayed out, but we've got default, racing, scenery, RTS, FPS. These are kind of different <laughs> preset modes, but the, Last option here that I kind of wanted to show is this guy, which is the uh, profiles. So if you remember in the profiles, you can go here to like select apps to link. So you will actually scan the system and you could actually see right here, hey, maybe um, I'm you know going to be working in Excel, right? Or maybe I'm going to actually play Cyberpunk or maybe I'm going to you know uh, be using my web browser, Microsoft Edge, right? Or I'm going to be mm -hmm. doing something in PowerPoint or Spotify, right? Uh, any kind of application. And then from there, you can see that you can customize all these aspects. So you could set like a volume level. You could set whether you want to enable, disable the touchpad, disable kind of pa panel overdrive. You could customize the fan speed, right? So you could actually have it sp to specific fan speeds. You could target the actual different visual profile that you see for the monitor. Um, even game first, where you could prioritize it to, let's say, maybe I'm going to be streaming. Maybe I'm going to be you know, watching a uh, video on demand service, you know, like Netflix or Hulu or YouTube, right? Oh, All cool. those things can be set up. So 
then you will see an actual population of apps right here and profiles. And then you could essentially just link those between very, very easily. So it's a really, really rich level of functionality. And um, if you haven't kind of had experience with the software, we've consistently kept updating the Armory Crate software experience. We have a full dedicated dev team. It's now on current uh, vor version 4.2 is actually the upcoming release that'll be coming on the next week or so. Um, mm -hmm. And that's been multi milestone releases in the last year and a half. And um, it's stable, it's reliable, it's functional. We're consistently working on improving the overall user experience. And we really think it adds to the total value of how you can get the best experience from your, you know, from your G15, your G17, your SCAR15, your SCAR17, it doesn't matter. Um, and the last part here to this UI is gonna be this little mobile connect here. So you can see this little pop-out module. Well, let me go ahead and go back here. I'm gonna go back to my primary cam and uh, open up my phone right here. <laughs> see, got Wait a minute, the... phone stuff? I didn't know that was going to be part of the presentation. <laughs> um, are, are, are you on an ROG phone? Is 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 that what This is just a general uh, a Pixel phone. Uh, you know, okay. We do have, of course, Zen phone and ROG phone. <laughs> uh, but the point here is that, of course, because it can work with, um, it does work with, you know, any Android or iOS mm -hmm. device, right? You don't have to necessarily be, you know, limited in that regard, right? So I'm literally gonna just pair it. There's literally a QR code that comes up in the app. It asks you to scan it, and then it will start to sync. And in a moment, I will show you this here. So once the actual syncing occurs, um, the cool thing that you have essentially within the software UI, hold on, I need to actually uh, turn on my Wi-Fi. So the, it can either work through Wi-Fi, uh, you need to be on the same wireless network, or you can also mm -hmm. use Bluetooth. In either scenario, it will work. Um, but the cool thing then from there is, let's say you know you jump into your game, right? And you don't want to necessarily you you know maybe you don't want to have overlays or you don't want to have to have, uh, different options enabled. Sorry, Give me one second here. It's always the fun of doing this stuff live for a demonstration, getting it all set up. Oh uh, yeah, I oh, I had the laptop in um, in airplane mode, so I had to yeah re I had to rerun the setup there. Um, <laughs> So the cool thing essentially is that then you could kind of set it where you could pair it up and, you know, you could have, you know, your laptop getting ready to kind of game and do everything that you wanted to do. Right. But then from there, you could have actually your phone right there on the side and you could essentially go through and you could uh, customize the fans. You could go ahead and see monitoring values for the CPU and for the GPU information. Um, all that is available to you right there on the phone. So if you've kind of got a nice setup where you have that kind of set up in that fashion, Mm -hmm. You know, you, you have that flexibility that you can use the kind of UI software there, or you could go through that option, either kind of scenario there. No, um, I mean, again, it's such a small consideration, but like we've got phones and tablets and things as these secondary displays that we, we kind of reference for at a glance. And when we're focused on a task on a desktop or a laptop, um, you know, I really wish there was more carryover, you know, like more sort of smart portability. We've got these sort of half measures of, well, we can kind of replicate your notifications on your desktop, or we can kind of send you this one app that pairs to like the RGB of your, you know, water cooling loop to change yep. the colors on your phone. Um, it's things like that. I mean, I kind I think that kind of helps like blur the lines. You know, the the computing that we do should be ubiquitous, and the parts of it that we need on different displays should follow us to those displays. And of course, you know. Um... You're already aware, right? But for, of course, the, that RGB crowd right here, you know, yeah. I got a little description of it there. But you can, of course, sync all these kind of devices in place. So there you can see, you know, you've got, we've got the Delta, we've got the Falchion, we've got the Pugio 2. <laughs> we could go in and you could, of course, sync all those different devices and be able to, of course, have a unified controlled experience. So, um, you know, that's a great thing, of course, with the Asus ROG ecosystem, right, is that all this can kind of tie together yeah. to even be able to allow you to have a really nice, a great kind of synchronized experience. And if you haven't kind of been able to know that we have a great set of kind of our comparing peripheral program, per peripheral products, that's kind of the really nice thing that kind of ties that all together there, right? Very so, nice. Um, that touches there on, I think the audio, the, the very last thing that I think kind of, as we kind of get ready to wrap things up here is I wanted to kind of just touch a little bit here on the external display, right? If we remember, yeah, we did talk about that this, uh, the model has a USB-C, output mm -hmm. right which i know you were the fan of right it's got the usb yeah, TV. it's a high speed port but you also if you had a uh especially essentially a usb-c 
to DisplayPort cable, you would attach that to your external display and then you could access NVIDIA G-Sync, right? And the benefit there is essentially you could go ahead and run the laptop in a high performance mode to even be able to get a higher level of frame rate um, mm -hmm. from your system. And you know how much it can vary, uh, but you know it could be a noticeable uplift. You could see you know 10, 15, maybe even 20 frames increase by going over to an external monitor and connecting it in that fashion. The important part is that you do want to use that essentially that DP output. You don't want to use the HDMI, um, and of course you can still benefit from that G-Sync experience to be able to reduce you know tear free um, you know gaming so that you can have not only that improvement in frame rate but still sure. be able to maintain that really nice responsive good feeling gameplay experience and that all kind of ties together to really be able to offer I think just a great synergy in terms of yeah. the overall experience right now d just before we move off of that though I, is there a, a was there a reason why the division between USB C and HDMI that they're that they were ported to kind of uh, you know the different graphics processing units on. Um, on technically, we could do it on both, um, as far right. as like putting the dis discrete, but it just depends. In this scenario, we've tried to um, implement that to be able to offer flexibility depending on the output configuration that you want from kind of maybe mm -hmm. more of a performance oriented pursuit versus maybe a more battery. Um, oriented pursuit. So having kind of default connections that favor one versus the other. DisplayPort is also the preferred connection for many external monitors to process um, G-Sync based gotcha. uh, processing. So that mm -hmm. is another reason why we use that USB-C. And since the USB-C standard, it can be varied because it's, of course, complicated because not all USB-C ports will support USB-PD or yeah, support sure. uh, DisplayPort over USB-C. Um, it can be variable, but uh, we kind of have like a best in class implementation here that gives us a lot of flexibility for that type of setup configuration, right? Now, um, just because I'm always curious about that kind of data, are, are you finding that more because uh, because, you know, the people shopping these types of solutions aren't just your general mainstream consumers. Are you finding that USB-C is starting to to take over as that connection standard? Oh, yeah. I mean, for us, uh, we already have kind of being supporters across the board, right? So if you take a look at our peripherals, every single one mm -hmm. of our new peripheral products, so every keyboard, every mouse, every headset, oh, yeah. our wireless headset um, are all natively USB-C products. Oh, but um, I mean so, for, for displays too, though, because that's yeah, part of displays, the USB seen, spec yeah. that, so that I'm getting really excited about. Yeah, we have new monitors, uh, multiple new monitors that are underneath uh, our, like our CV series that are all use USB-C. We still don't necessarily see that as common in terms of like the desktop usage. Most desktop mm -hmm. users are still using DisplayPort or using HDMI. But um, where we do see that transition is more in that mobile segment, right? Because in the mobile right. segment, since there is a USB-C <laughs> output that can carry display signal, we do see users that are going like, hey, does that monitor also now have USB-C to kind of bridge those through together? And yeah. in that regard, we're of course already there at kind of the forefront offering USB-C options for those users that are looking for that flexibility. And you know, when you kind of tie it all together, if we take a look here, that's kind of what like the setup could kind of look like right there, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you've got your, your laptop, you know, your monitor, your Wi-Fi 6 router, right? We, uh, RTX AX82U or 86U would be great choices right there um, in terms <laughs> of you know monitors. Um, and then, you know, your wireless or wired peripherals in your headset, right? You know, kind of would all be all synergized together. And even that router, right? It's got RGB. Yeah. Right? Just, just to add a little bit of flair right there, right? <laughs> I love it. But but again, I mean, like, it, it, it definitely does speak to um, sort of the evolving trends in style and lifestyle and then the practical power conversations that we also need to have as well. Like, it kind of matters. It, it, it does feel kind of nice when when there's, like, a, a sort of, um, I don't want to say fashion, but like a style conversation that you can find that through line and you can find something that really fits and works with what you're trying to do in your own home or, or even just like, hey, this is my look when I go out and this is what I want to show off and this is, is what I, I want it to say. No, uh, you're you're 100 right, and I think you know that's overall kind of the design intent um, here. I was trying to see if I could bring up the Aura Creator software to kind of show if anybody kind of wants mm -hmm. to see the customization for some of the Aura patterns that you could um, do here. Um, um, to see if I can bring that up, but otherwise, um, you know, I think that you know we've covered probably the the vast majority of points that you know yeah. we've introduced here. If we kind of just kind of do that kind of quick one minute, two minute recap, right? You know what is kind of new for 2021 between the SCAR 2020 model, 2021, the external design, right? We have a new lid, right? With the new surface coating, right? We also then have a new nano coating design on the inside. We have mm -hmm. a larger touchpad, right? 
We have an optical mechanical keyboard. We have new panels that can be 1440p or 300 hertz. You have support for up to you know, an RTX 3080 class graphics card. Um, the memory and the actual SSDs, we didn't note on that, but they are upgradable, right? You're already getting, of course, high performance configurations in these models where um, you know, you're talking about like a one terabyte M.2 drive, 16 gigabytes or 32 gigabytes of 3200. But on both the 15 inch and the 17 inch model, do keep in mind, you have two M.2 bays that are fully accessible once you remove the back panel. So if you want to upgrade your M.2 SSD, you have an open bay. And both DIMMs uh, are accessible. So it's not oh, like one DIMM nice. is on one side of the motherboard and the other one's on the other yeah. side. Both DIMMs are fully upgradable on this. So you do have that. Um, that's applicable for both the G15 and also for the SCAR. So that upgradability there. Um, the display kind of connectivity as a whole, right, where we have, again, kind of recapping. Wi-Fi 6 on board, Bluetooth high speed on board, gigabit ethernet, HDMI, USB-C output with USB PD support, type A, um, USB, USB port, and then two more, um, excuse me, uh, type A ports that there. Uh, then your, of course, your analog line level audio design. The upgraded cooling, which has the liquid metal, mm -hmm. six heat pipes, of course, the four fan design, the four speakers with a smart amp amplification, right? Um, and then, of course, all the work that we've done in terms of all the fan profiling options that we talked about within the Armory Crate software, right? So a lot to pack in here. And, you know, um, I think, you know, we, these models, they already have started to list them on Newegg, so you can check them out. We have, I think, two versions of the SCAR-15 that are, are currently available um, in terms of, I think there's a up to an RTX 3080 with an 8 gig, and then there's also an RTX 3080 with a 16 gig. So if you even want the kind of super high-end <laughs> model, um, both of those come with the 5900HX. I think there's also a uh, slightly lower spec G15, which is still a great unit, has a mm -hmm. lot of the upgrade elements that we talked about. Um, and that's, I think, at a pretty aggressive price point. I think if we check the price on that one, it might be something like $1299. Um, oh, and wow. I think it has like an RTX 3050 class series GPU. Um, still very, very nice model. And then uh, for the larger size, there will be an ROG Strix G17 um, and an ROG Strix SCAR 17 that'll be coming later in Q4. And it, maybe that'll actually be one of the ways to end off is I can show you guys just an image of the SCAR 17 so you guys yeah, can see just the, the number pad layout. And I think that should be it, unless there's any kind of um, questions well, that anybody there, there might have one, dropped in there. One quick question here is the HDMI port version 2.1. Uh, no, so it is an HDMI 2.0. So 2.1 is still a pretty new specification in terms of kind of compliance standards. Mm -hmm. Keep in mind that when you're designing and developing a product like this, right, it's literally, you know, sometimes a year plus in design and development and validation pipeline. So 2.1 is only literally starting to make its realization. We will be, I think, probably the first manufacturer to be releasing HDMI 2.1 enabled monitors to the market. Um, and you know, the pandemic and a lot of things factored into, into that process. Um, so still HDMI 2.0, but keep in mind that for the best kind of class experience, you would really want to be using the USB-C USB, with display right. port output, right? Because that will support your ability to have that higher refresh rate along with also supporting the G-Sync functionality. So the HDMI, we really see that as a kind of more convenient based option that if you just kind of want to output to a TV or to a monitor, you want to be able to have 1080p, although you of course could go up to, you know, even 4K if maybe you're outputting, you know, for, for like sure. video on demand or like, you know, YouTube or streaming sessions or things like that, right? And and I feel like I can answer this one for Faraz that this will be Windows 11 compatible. I'd be very surprised yeah. if you guys yeah, have 100%, 100%. All, all of the current generation <laughs> laptops will have full support for Windows 11 uh, from the UEFI side. There may be potentially a UEFI update that will be a released. So right. that's called a UEFI BIOS update. A lot of but us are going through the respective that right support now. pages. No worries in that regard. Um, once the actual availability gets towards, of course, you know, the later end of Q4, once it formally comes out, there will be announcements from us. But no worries. You're going to get a great experience out of the box with Windows 10, but you will be ready for Windows 11. Yeah. So, I mean, I think we uh, we want to see this, this uh, SCAR 17 if we can. Yes. Yeah, so let me see if I can bring it up here. If not, we might have to just bring up the, the product page for it because I thought I did have uh, the image for it here. So give me one second. Uh, but one of the things that I definitely appreciate about how you guys have positioned 
this tier of laptop. I mean, we used to have much more granular conversations about, well, this is really a product line that we see could be for this type of student or a dorm room, and you're looking at a desktop replacement. But really, if you want to go with this type of mobile workstation, you need to look at these kinds of components. And it does seem to be, um, not, not that there isn't delineation between your product lines, but in a very broad sense, we're we're trying to capture the reality of being kind of this mixed mode, different solutions for different problems at different times kind of workflow. It seems so many of us, especially like you were saying, work from home, school from home, uh, whether or not we're starting to travel again or open up some of our borders and restrictions, this computer needs to fulfill different roles in different situations. And it seems like a lot of thought has really gone into that. Yeah, no, 100%. I mean, uh, again, the design kind of intent here was to, I think, be able to offer you guys a great laptop that could really be a true laptop, right? You could use this on the go. You could use it for gaming. You could use it as a desktop replacement. And into every one of those scenarios, you could really get a great experience with a G15, a G17, a Star 15, and the Scar 17. Um, definitely the 17-inch models are going to be a little bit larger. I still think, actually, they're pretty light and kind of uh, comparatively compact for even a 17 inch <laughs> class product, right? But you know, the, even on this 15 inch side, it does really cover a lot of bases. Of course, if you really are supremely looking for something that's either, either thinner and lighter, Asus does have you covered. We of course have mm -hmm. like our G14 series, which has been absolutely one of the most popular models, I think in the last maybe 24 months, bar none for all gaming laptops, for even people that want a thinner and lighter weight option that also does have an RTX 30 series GPU and yeah. latest generation Ryzen based parts, but an even a more compact footprint. But the benefit that I think that you really have with the 15 is you got that little bit more breathing room to really have, I think, that best experience when you're also using this in a more stationary um, kind of design, right? Um, and it and just really kind of favors that let up. Yeah, setup. 15 seems a lot less like compromises and more about just a tighter balancing act than it used to be. Yeah, I mean, uh, we definitely have gotten, a, I think, made a lot of inroads with the 14-inch models that are offering essentially almost 15-inch class visibility in those 14-inch 14, 14 uh, design envelopes. But I think that's, if we mirror those same kind of de design improvements onto the 15-inch models, you're getting something that might have in the previous past been like 16, 17-inch class now in 15-inch bodies, right? Which you can even see compared to the prior generation where we made it more compact. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's impressive that we essentially gave you all those upgrades and even just made it more compact than in the prior yeah. generation. So if we take a look here at the G17, oh, I won't show it. the external shot because it, the external shot looks very much the same as uh, sure. the G15. Oh, um, but I see what you're saying about the, the, the keyboard. Yeah. Yeah. But the main benefit really when you go over to the 17 is going to be uh, that the keyboard is kind of slightly revised where you get that kind of nice highlighted numpad design right there directly to the right-hand side. But all the other kind of design, attribute, design attributes that we talked about are gonna be the same. So you still have that kind of gamer-centric design keyboard that we have here um, that's gonna be present. So no kind of changes in that. In terms of the ID characteristics, everything mm -hmm. is gonna pretty much still be the same in terms of the overall design intent. And keep in mind, everything else that we talk about from you know the, the cooling to the, uh, you know, uh, to all the software customization, the lighting elements, all those different things are going to be the same on the G17. Of course, you have to look at the model and the spec version that you're looking at because there sure. should be some variations in that regard. And keep in mind that if you want, kind of want everything that we've talked about in the stream, the SCAR is going to always be the best option because it will give you every single item. And we, we didn't touch on it, um, just but remember also that all the SCAR units also still come with the Keystone 2, which is that uh, small little accessory. I think I got it right there right where small little nfc based item you take it out right there you dock it in right there and it allows you to have essentially like a, a private shadow drive that's available to you and as well as customized profiles so um you know if you're maybe in a household or family environment where you have more than one person using a laptop it's nice that you can kind of personalize everything to yourself and your own information mm -hmm. to kind of your keystone right and you could still let you know a family member so maybe if you're a parent you could still let your son or your daughter game on this right um, but if you want to have your own settings or your own files that are accessible as you as the parent, then you know, you could isolate those to the keystone. So that's kind of an example of how you could kind of set that up, right? And then uh, one more question here from uh, DeadBC77. Will there be a G17 advantage? 
So that's actually a really good question. So the Advantage series is actually a different series from us. It's um, a different, actually, uh, platform design. So it is not the same as the standard. So effectively, if you're looking for an NVIDIA-centric powered solution, which is what we're talking about here with the RTX 30 series class, um, that is going to be the G17 or it'll be the SCAR 17. If you see the essentially advantage, that would be an alternate platform configuration. So we do have those configurations that are also available and you can definitely check out Newegg, but mm -hmm. definitely if you wanna be able to benefit from all the great um, you know, technologies, especially those NVIDIA centric technologies that we talked about, whether you know third gen Max-Q um, and of course DLSS, RTX, uh, NVIDIA broadcasts and all those corresponding elements, then you would wanna have a RTX 30 series at the heart of your configuration, right? Whatever it's gonna be, you know, 3050, 3070, 3080, whatever it might be. Well, um, JJ, thank you so much. Uh, before I let you go, uh, the Newegg Ninjas have been shooting me a couple little private messages as we've been going through the stream. Uh, we uh, just, you know, it just so happened that two people who were chatting uh, in the comments, well, I, they just need to have $50 Steam gift cards. Um, it's just something we needed to do. Uh, so I, if, uh, I, I don't know if they're still watching, but our, our social team and the new egg ninjas are going to be reaching out to Andy, the lab from YouTube and I'm super Lee on Twitch. So, uh, be on the lookout, um, for some steam card goodness to the tune of $50 each. Uh, and, uh, I want to, I want to throw a huge thank you for, uh, for everybody that was joining this, uh, stream for contributing some some really great, some really fun comments. And we got some great questions as we were kind of moving through. And questions were coming in and I was like, oh, I'll, I'll throw that to JJ. Oh, JJ already saw that. He's already answering that question. So I wasn't always uh, quite on top of making sure each question was getting attributed to, to the person who was asking it. But uh, making these more con uh, conversational and more interactive, uh, we definitely appreciate those of you who are along for that ride to talk about some really fun, geeky stuff. JJ, thank you so much for, for joining us on this. It's always such a pleasure uh, oh, no, to, been, to dig into this stuff with you. Yeah, it's been fantastic, man, as always, uh, JC, man. Thanks uh, for just, you know, being a great host as always. Thank you to everybody that actually joined us on the stream. Hopefully you guys found it interesting and informative, helped to kind of get the sense of kind of that difference between 2020 and 2021 and all the design work that we put into it. And um, actually there was one question I did forget that I did see it actually popped up and I, I didn't mean to talk about it when we're talking about the panels, but I didn't, is that some people was asking about the brightness. Um, mm. Star Edition is also a great way to always get a brighter panel. So uh, the configurations on either one would be a minimum of at least either 300 nits or 400 nits. Um, mm -hmm. And that's actually a pretty big upgrade because compared to many other kind of laptop screens, usually maybe in that 250 nits or a little bit under 300 nits of brightness, having a 300 nit or 400 nit monitor, it's quite a bit more punchy, dynamic, and just a better experience in terms of just kind of giving you a more immersive screen to look at. Yeah. So um, if you are, again, wondering about if there was a difference in terms of the screen on the SCAR, depending on the model, the 300 hertz or the 165 hertz, uh, 1440p versus the 1080p, One's 300 uh, nits and the other one's 400 nits. But man, uh, fantastic. If you guys have any other questions, comments, also make sure to drop them in uh, yeah. the YouTube comment section. Um, I will do my best to follow up with you guys and I'm sure Newegg would appreciate a, a like and a subscribe as well, right? <laughs> That's the ending patter is, is you know, subscribing and checking out and sharing the content. Um, I, in in sharing the, the love, um, were people to kind of follow up on some of these conversations, what would be a good community style platform for do-it-yourself PC building enthusiasts to uh, to follow up with you on, on uh, gaming PCs and high-end desktops? Yeah, if you're interested in following up the conversation, you can either check out our ASUS PC DIY Facebook group, uh, which is great if you're doing anything in the PC DIY segment. If you've got broader questions regarding any of our system-related products, like our great lineup of gaming laptops, make sure to just go ahead and reach out to us on any one of our social media channels. We're on all of them. doesn't matter whether it's you know Instagram, <laughs> Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, whatever it might be, feel free to go ahead and reach out to us and we'll do our best to go ahead and follow up with you and clarify your guys' questions. So uh, again, thanks for joining us in the stream. Everybody stay safe, stay healthy. It's been fantastic uh, being able to give you guys a deep dive into what we do for 2021 in our gaming laptops. 
Yeah. And I'll, I'll second PC DIY. I lurk there a lot. It's, it's a really good crew of people that you have there. So, uh, folks, thank you so much. Uh, th this, this is always my pleasure to, to get to nerd out and, and kind of dig into this stuff with all of you fine folks, all your eggheads out there. And again, I, I kind of enjoy that process of, you know, occasionally we've got some cool things to give away too. So I'm, I'm, I'm so glad and I'm, I'm so happy to be along with this ride. Uh, on this ride with you all. So folks, uh, that's going to do it for us on this stream. As always, thanks so much for for watching, for subscribing, sharing this content. Be on the lookout. The, the New Egg Studio cha uh, channel here on YouTube It's going to have so much more content coming your way. Uh, PC building, high-end desktop, um, gaming, and then some fun stuff too along the way with some pretty cool giveaways. So, so make sure you're subscribed and you've got that bell icon hit. Uh, I'm Juan Carlos Bagnell, AKA some gadget guy for New Egg Studios. Thanks so much for watching and we'll catch you all on the next stream. Take care. <laughs>